uh, starting uh, the first uh, or a parallel session on the third day of Kadal Fest. I am absolutely honored and delighted to be a part of this session where I will be sharing the space with some <laughs> of the most renowned, celebrated, and most interestingly, controversial and favorite writers of mine. So just setting the stage for the kind of discussion and debates that will be following uh, shortly. And uh, I remember that in February, uh, uh, when Judith came to me and she said that this time she wanted to uh, organize an event that focused more on performance and less on academics. And uh, we were wondering, uh, you know, we wanted to look for a space, a hybrid space that could bring the discussions and debates out of the conference halls and under the tree, exactly like it is uh, here today. And I immediately thought of Adi Shakti. I brought her here. She looked at the place and she fell in love with it. So just a context of how this whole hybrid event got conceived in the first place. And then, you know, she and the other uh, partners have been working day and night to make this event possible. And the idea basically is to bring the rigor of academics and the joy and spontaneity of performance together, performance, activism, etc. And I think we are doing a good job of it. Uh, that also reminds me of the round table we had with the Adivasi uh, writers um, yesterday, where you know there was this emphasis on opening up the hearts and how uh, connections can be made with joyful hearts rather than thinking brains. So I would like to begin this round table with that sense of connection, with that sense of rediscovering the joy in whatever we do. This round table is, you know, entitled All Aboard, and uh, it will be discussing issues on translation uh, and, you know, connections, uh, gains and losses of translation. Uh, the people who are present here are quite well known. They need no introduction, but I would nonetheless, you know, uh, say a few words by way of, you know, starting the conversation. So first we have... Um, Mr. Perumal Murugan, an author and a scholar, quite renowned author and scholar in Tamil, who has written numerous novels, five short story collections, four anthologies of poetry. Interestingly, five of his novels have been translated into English, and he is uh, a controversial figure, especially after the publication of his work, One Part Women, which talked about you know interesting things. He'll be discussing those with us. So we welcome you aboard. Um, we have uh, uh, Meena Kandasamy, Indian poet, fiction writer, translator, activist as well from Chennai, who has published uh, two collections of poetry, Touch and Mrs. Militancy, uh, some novels, The Gypsy Goddesses, When I Hit You, Exquisite Cad Cadavers, that came out recently, and she edits the Dalit uh, bi monthly magazine of Dalit Media. She is also uh, a translator. She has uh, translated classic works of uh, Periyar. She's also a translator for uh, uh, another writer, Salma, here on board. And about translation, she says, I'll quote her, I know that there is no limit, no boundary, no specific style guided to poetry, guide to poetry, that you are free to experiment, that you are free to find your own voice, that you are free to flounder and also free to fail once in a while, because all this happens all the time when you translate. And I think that would be, you know, that whole debate of fidelity, how true you need to be and how much you can experiment is going to be one of the major issues uh, today uh, as we take this discussion uh, further. We have uh, Salma, who is a Tamil writer, activist, politician. She is founder of the non-government uh, women's rights organization called Your Hope is Remaining. And her work, I quote a critic, combines a rare outspokenness about taboo areas of the traditional Tamil women's experience with the language of compressed intensity and startling metaphorical uh, resonance. We welcome you here as well. Uh, we have also on board Gogu Shamala, a contemporary Dalit writer in India, an author, editor, and biographer 
biographical writer in Telugu. Her works include short story collection, Father May Be an Elephant, Mother Only a Small Basket. She has participated in numerous conferences all over the world in Australia, Germany, uh, Jaipur. We welcome you here. Uh, we also have on board a poet from uh, Mahupada village, Narmada district of Gujarat, who writes in Dewali Bhili language. He is uh, one of the few poets in Gujarat uh, writing in a tribal language. We welcome you here, Mr. Jitender Vasava. Uh, he's, he has established the Adivasi Sahitya Academy in 2014 and is the president of that academy. He has to his credit four books on Adivasi tribal oral literature. He has also edited Lakra, a poetry magazine dedicated to tribal voices. So we welcome all these writers on board. Along with these writers, we have celebrated translators as well, accompanying these writers. We have Gopika Jadeja, who will be translating for Jitender today. We have Chandra Shekhar translating for Gobu Shamula, and we have Nina translating for Salma and Karamal Murugan. Uh, so we will start with, uh, you know, our first question. We will try to go around the table as we elicit responses, reactions. The idea of this round table is to literally have an exchange, not just uh, take the question answer format, but also react and respond format. So we will be happy if the writers are, you know, drawing material from each other, responding to each other. Uh, we will have to keep our responses short so that we give time to the translators to take up the translation so that, you know, everybody is on the same page. I will begin, begin this uh, round table, uh, you know, throwing, opening it up with a couple of questions. And uh, translation is something that I believe we all have come across whether we read texts in translation or translated ourselves or were simply struggling to translate you know, our, our ideas into writing or any kind of artistic expression. So the first question that comes to my mind is, what has been your experience with translation? Uh, have you read any of the translated works? Do you think any of the translated works have influenced you? And one of the prime reasons why this question came to mind is also because, you know, India has had great relationships with Russia and many writers have said in different places that they were influenced. Russian literature was easily available. Even Russian books were easily available. There were books in English uh, published in Russia when we were kids in the 70s and the 80s. So I thought this would be an interesting question for all to respond. So I can uh, begin with... Uh, with வாய்ப்பு <laughs> அவங்க சொன்ன மாதிரி சிக்ஸ்டீஸ் செவன்டீஸில் ரஷ்யன் லிட்ரேச்சர் வந்துச்சுன்னு சொன்னாங்க தமிழை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் ஃபார்ட்டீஸ்லேருந்தே ரஷ்யன் லிட்ரேச்சர் வர ஆரம்பிச்சிச்சு அவங்க அந்த ப்ரொக்ரஸிவ் ப்ரொஃபிசர்ஸ் வெளியிடுறதுக்கு முன்னாலேயே இங்கே தமிழ் ரைட்டர் நிறைய மக்சிம் கார்கியுடைய மதர்லாம் வந்து தமிழில் ஃபார்ட்டீஸ்லேயே வந்துடுச்சு அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு பெரிய வாய்ப்பு இருந்தது இது அதே போல் பெங்கால் லிட்ரேச்சரில் சரத்சந்திரர் தாராசங்கர் பானர்ஜி இப்படி நிறைய பேருடைய ரைட்டிங்ஸ் வந்து தமிழில் வந்துருக்கு இது இது ஐரோப்பியன் லிட்ரேச்சர் அமெரிக்கன் லிட்ரேச்சர் இப்படி ஒரு கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டிஸ்லேருந்து சிக்ஸ்டீஸ் வரைக்கும் பார்த்திங்கன்னா தமிழில் ஏராளமான ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் வந்துருக்கு அதுக்கு காரணம் ஒரு அந்த அந்த பீரியடு பற்றி ஆராய்ச்சி பண்ணக்கூடிய ஆராய்ச்சியாளர்கள் சொல்கிறது என்ன அப்படின்னா அந்த காலகட்டம் தமிழ்நாட்டில் ஒரு மிடில் கிளாஸ் எமர்ஜாகி வந்த காலகட்டம் அவங்களுக்கு வந்து பெரிய பொழுதுபோக்கு ரீடிங் தான் அப்போ அதுக்கு ஏற்ற அளவுக்கு தமிழில் மாடர்ன் லிட்ரேச்சர் நிறைய வரலை 
அப்போ அவங்களுக்கு அந்த ரீடிங் ரீடர்ஸுக்கு வந்து ஒரு தீனி போடுறதுக்கு இந்த மாதிரி டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ரொம்ப அவசியமாக இருந்தது அப்படின்னு சொல்கிறாங்க நான்லாம் வந்து க காலேஜில் இருந்து படிக்கும்போது வேறு வேறு மொழியிலிருந்து படிக்கிறதுக்கான அந்த லிட்ரேச்சர்லாம் படிக்கிறதுக்கான வாய்ப்பு டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் மூலமாக தான் கிடைச்சிது அதை பற்றி அதே போல் மலையாளத்திலிருந்து கன்னடத்திலிருந்து மலையாளத்திலிருந்து நிறைய தமிழுக்கு வந்திருக்கு இப்போவும் வந்துட்டுருக்கு கன்னடத்திலிருந்தும் நிறைய வந்திருக்கு மற்ற இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸில் சில மொழிகள்லேருந்து அவ்வளவு கிடையாது இப்போ ஒடிய மொழியிலிருந்து அதிகம் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் வரல அஸ்ஸாமிலிருந்து அதிகம் வரல பின்னாடி என்பிடி தொடங்கினப்போ ஒரு சிலது வந்திருக்கு அவ்வளோதான் அதனால் இந்த மாதிரி டிரான்ஸ்லேஷனோட உள்ள உறவுங்கிறது அந்த அந்த அளவுக்கு என்னுடைய இலக்கிய பார்வையை உருவாக்கக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு அது இருந்துச்சுன்னு சொல்லலாம் um and my connections with translations um, um is very deep rooted i am somebody who reads a lot in tamil and when i read in english i am generally a slow reader uh, and i have to say that uh, the opportunity and the possibility to read a lot of international literature world literature literature from other languages exists through tamil and uh, i am very happy about the fact that the question talked about russian literature uh, and she mentioned the 60s and 70s Uh, but it's very interesting that in tamil nadu russian literature was av- available from the 1940s and uh, the advent of uh, russian literature in tamil actually predates the existence of progress publishers uh, which started you know the professional translation so this was like an enormous influence and uh, we had even the texts like maxim gorky's uh, novels available and we also have a lot of bengali literature like uh, sarat chandra nadis and uh, as well as the european and american literature all of which were available in tamil um, i would like to single out the period between 1940s to 1960s when there was this enormous influx of translation from other languages into the tamil language and uh, this was uh, those people who researched this particular period of history uh they say that the reason for this is because of the emergence of the middle class in in, in tamil nadu and the fact that uh, the major uh, leisure activity for this emerging middle class was uh, reading and the consumption of literature and because tamil literature at that point uh, had did not pre- uh, produce a lot of modern writing most of the uh, fiction that you know people were reading was through translation and translation kind of filled the gap of you know what people wanted to read and uh, i do think that uh, you know in terms of languages from around the world uh, and around the country that we are reading there is a lot of literature from kannada there is literature from uh, malayalam a lot of it bengali but there are few languages um, that are, are not sufficiently translated one of them is assamese and the other i think is odia oriya literature so um, uh, this is uh, this is i think the link between translation and the influence that it has had on my own readership அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஒர்க் அப்படின்றது ரொம்ப என்னோடய லைஃப்பில் மிகப்பெரிய அளவுக்கு என்னோட இலக்கியத்தில் எனக்கு பெரிய ஒரு நம்பிக்கையை கொடுத்த ஒன்று நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ரசிய இலக்கியங்கள் என்னோட ஊர் சின்ன கிராமத்தில் சின்ன லைப்ரரி அந்த லைப்ரரியில் இருந்த புத்தகங்கள் வந்து எல்லாமே ரசிய இலக்கியங்கள் தான் என்னோடய பதிமூணு வயசில் நான் அந்த புக்கு புக்ஸ் எல்லாம் கையில் எடுத்து பார்க்க ஆரம்பிக்கிறேன் எனக்கு வந்து அந்த சமயத்தில் போர் அல்லது காதல் அதில் நடந்த இழப்பு இது எவ்வளோ விஷயங்கள் புத்தகங்கள் வழியாக தான் எனக்கு அந்த புத்தகங்கள் தான் எனக்கு கற்றுக் கொடுத்து சொல்ல நினைக்கிறேன் நான் இலக்கியங்கள் வந்து என்ன உண்மையான இலக்கியோட என்ன ஆரம்பத்திலே வந்து மோசமான புத்தகங்கள் படிக்காமல் நல்ல புத்தகங்களும் நல்ல இலக்கியங்களையும் வாசிக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு வாய்ப்பாக அது அமைஞ்சது அன்றைக்கி நடந்த அந்த இலக்கிய பரிமாற்றங்கள் என்சி என்சிபிஹெச்சில் வந்து அது நிறைய பண்ணியிருக்காங்க நான் பல முறை வந்து யோசிச்சுருக்கேன் ஏன் இப்போ தமிழில் அந்த போல் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் வர்றதில்லை அப்போ வந்து நேருக்கும் அந்த ரஷ்ய அரசுக்கும் இருந்த ஒரு ப ஒரு நெருக்கமான நட்புறவு இந்தியாவுக்கும் ரஷ்யாவுக்கு இடையில் இருந்த நட்புறவுனால அந்த ச சில விஷயங்கள் நிறைய ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன்ஸ் நடந்ததுன்னு சொல்லுவாங்க ஆனால் இப்போ அந்த ரஷ்யா வந்து மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு கனவா பொது உடம்பிச்சு தாங்கமோ அல்லது அந்த ரஷ்யாங்கிற ஒரு நாடு எவ்வளோ பெரிய நாடு அதில் இருந்த அந்த செதர்னதுக்கு அப்புறம் அந்த நடந்த வாழ்க்கை பார்த்துன பார்வையோ அல்லது இலக்கியங்களோ அது எதுவுமே இப்போ நமக்கு தெரியலை அது ரொம்ப பெரிய இழப்பாக தான் நான் இது வரைக்கும் பார்க்குறேன் அதை போல் வந்து நீங்கள் 
தமிழ்ல இருந்து பல பிற மொழிகளுக்கு போறதை விட மலையாளத்துல இருந்து நிறைய புத்தகங்கள் வந்து வாசிக்க கிடைச்சிருக்கு ஆஹ் அதுல வந்து கமலாதாசுடைய புத்தகங்கள் எல்லாம் வாசிக்கிறப்போ ஏன்னா எழுதணும் அப்படின்னு தோன்ற எழுதணும் அப்படின்னு நினைக்கிற சமயத்துல ஒரு இலக்கியம் சார்ந்த பெண்ணுடைய எழுத்து சார்ந்த ஒரு அஹ் விரிவான ஒரு சிந்தனையையும் ஒரு ஐடியாவையும் கொடுத்த ஒரு புத்தகங்கள்ல வந்து அவங்களுடைய கருத்துக்களும் கவிதைகளும் எனக்கு கொடுக்குது அது ரொம்ப முக்கியமான ஒண்ணு அதே போல இஸ்மத் சுப்தாயோட கதைகள் அதுவும் வந்து பெண்கள் இப்படி எல்லாம் எழுதலாம் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு பார்வையையும் எனக்கு கொடுக்குது அப்போ ஒரு இலக்கியன்றது மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு பரிவ பரிமாற்றத்தை தர்றது மட்டும் இல்லாம நமக்கு இலக்கியம் சார்ந்த பயணிக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு அடையாள ஒரு வழியையும் நமக்கு காட்டுது நான் நினைக்கிறேன் என்னுடைய புத்தகம் சமீபத்துல மராட்டில டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணது அப்போ நிறைய பேர் வந்து வாசகர்கள் வந்து எனக்கு என்னோட புத்தகத்தை படிச்சுட்டு என்ன காண்டாக்ட் பண்ணாங்க இப்போ வந்து ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு பரிமாற்றத்தை தரக்கூடிய ஒன்று ஒன்றா தான் நான் பார்க்குறேன் சார் சொன்னது மாதிரி அஸ்ஸாமில் என்ன நடக்குது தெலுங்கில் கூட என்ன நடக்குதுன்னு நமக்கு தெரியாது மலையாளமும் கன்னடமும் ஓரளவுக்கு தமிழில் நிறைய வந்துட்டு இருக்கு தெலுங்கில் இலக்கியத்தில் என்ன நடந்துட்டு இருக்கு அல்லது குஜராத்தில் என்ன நடக்குது இது போன்ற நிறைய விஷயங்கள் வரணும் அப்படின்னு நான் தெரிஞ்சுக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஆனால் அதுக்கான வாய்ப்புகள் ரொம்ப கம்மியாக தான் இருக்குது இலக்கியத்தை வந்து உருவாக்குறதுக்கு என்னுடைய வாசிப்பு சார்ந்த அனுபவங்களை தந்ததில் மொழிபெயர்ப்புக்கு மிகப்பெரிய பங்கு இருக்குன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் I lived in a small village and there was a small library there and some of the first books which I encountered uh, for reading were translated books from the Russian uh, into the Tamil language and I was like a 13 year old who did not have any larger experience like knowing what was war or what was love and so in my first encounter it was through these books that I understood about you know these larger things that took place in the world and how I internalized them so in the beginning and i'm also like so and uh, i also believe that a lot of these books were brought out by the ncbh uh, and the supreme court and sometimes i wonder why is it that uh, we had such an influx of books from the russian into the tamil language and uh, i possibly believe that some of it had to do with the relationship that uh, jawaharlal nehru had with the russian government and the kind of understanding that existed between india and the soviet union and i also feel the kind of blankness or the absence that exists today because uh, russia is a big country and uh, a lot of people look at it as the death of the dream of communism and uh, sometimes i believe that it's a massive loss because we in tamil do not know what is happening in the country we are not reading literature first hand so this is uh, this has been a marked shift uh, and then coming back to translate the text and the effect that it has had on me as a writer um i i was extremely uh, influenced by the poetry and the writings of kamala das because it uh, because it kind of uh, showed me what women's writing was about and uh, what it could do it also allowed to broad base my own thought and expand it what i was thinking uh, i also think the another uh, another women writer who influenced me a lot is isma chuktai um and uh, i believe then that literature especially translated literature has allowed for an exchange of ideas it has also allowed for the way to go forward in your own writing in your own journey um i recently had my book translated in marathi and then it brings a new audience it also brings a lot of interactions and uh, i would agree with uh, prema murugan who said that you know uh, literature from malayalam and kannada is very accessible to us i also believe that is true that there's absence of assamese and oriya literature but there is also an absence of telugu and uh, um, gujarati literature uh, you know there's this gap and uh, here i believe that you know my readership uh, in books uh, has a, is an enormous contribution of trans- translated literature in my readership as a writer అందరికి జైది రైటర్ గా నేను చాలా లేట్ గా స్టార్ట్ అయ్యాను రాయడం కానీ చదవడం మాత్రం నాకు అందుబాటులో ఉన్నాయి అన్ని కూడా చదివాను 
చిన్న చిన్న మ్యాగజైన్స్ అవి ఉంటే చదివాను కానీ అవి ఏంటంటే నాకు పెద్దగా సంతోషంగా కానీ నాలెడ్జ్ ఇచ్చే రకంగా ఉండేది కాదు ఏదో చదువుతున్నా అంటే చదువుతున్నాను కానీ కొన్ని ట్రాన్స్లేషన్స్ మాత్రం రష్యా రష్యా నుండి తెలుగులోకి ట్రాన్స్లేట్ కావడానికి తెలుగులో కొన్ని పబ్లికేషన్సే పనిచేస్తున్నాయి కొన్ని రష్యా అండ్ చైనా నావెల్స్ చదివినప్పుడు నేను చాలా క్లోజ్గా ఫీల్ అయ్యేది కాదు బాగా ఐడెంటిఫై అయ్యేది ఈవెన్ అందుట్లో గర్ల్స్ ఉంటే ఐఎమ్ దట్ గర్ల్ అట్లా దగ్గరగా ఫీల్ అయ్యేది అట్లా ఐడెంటిఫై అయ్యేది ఎక్కువ వాటి మీద ఎక్కడైనా పుస్తకాల షాప్కి వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఆ బుక్స్ ఎక్కడ ఉన్నాయని చూడాలి అన్నమాట ఇంకా మిగతా బుక్స్ చదువుతున్నప్పుడు ఒక గురువు శిష్య సంబంధాలు ఎట్లయితే ఉంటుందో ఆ గురువు అక్కడ శిష్యుడు ఇక్కడ మధ్యలో పెద్ద గ్యాప్ అనమాట అవి చదువుతా ఉంటే కూడా అట్లనే ఎక్కడ ఐడెంటిఫికేషన్ లేదు ఐడెంటిఫికేషన్ కావాలి అని అంటే ఇట్లాంటి బుక్సే ఐడెంటిఫై అయ్యేది అట్లా తర్వాత కొంత లెఫ్ట్ ఎంఎల్ పార్టీ నక్స్లైట్ పార్టీ లిటరేచర్ ఆ లిటరేచర్లో మొత్తం కూడా సాక్రిఫైసెస్ సో మెనీ సాక్రిఫైసెస్ ఫిల్లింగ్స్ ఎన్కౌంటర్స్ రిపోర్ట్స్ ఎవ్రీడే రీడింగ్ మెటీరియల్ అది ఎమోషన్స్ అండ్ క్రైమ్ వీ ఐడెంటిఫై విత్ దెన్ దే ఆర్ మై రిలేటివ్స్ దే ఆర్ పోలీస్ ఆల్సో మై రిలేటివ్ పీపుల్ ఆల్సో మై రిలేటివ్ అట్లా ఫీల్ అయిపోయి ఆ రిపోర్ట్స్ రోజు చదవడము అదొకటి ఇంకా సేమ్ టైం స్కూలు స్కూలు అండ్ కాలేజ్ మైండ్ ఎప్పుడు కూడా వాటి మీద ఉండేది స్కూల్లో కాలేజీలో ఉండేది కాదు కానీ ఎప్పుడైతే పాలిటిక్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ స్టూడెంట్ యాక్టివిజం అయినప్పుడు నేను చాలా క్లోజ్గా అందుట్లో ఉండడము అట్లా కొంత యాక్టివ్ ఉండడం ఎందుకంటే బయట ఈ ప్రెజర్ పనిచేసేదాన్ని అన్నమాట కాబట్టి నేను వాటిలో ఉండుకుంటూ చదువును చదివాను చదువు అన్నంటే ఇట్లా ఇది జస్ట్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఫర్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఇట్స్ ఫర్ జాబ్ అండ్ సర్టిఫికేట్ లైక్ దాని తర్వాత ఎప్పుడైతే నైంటీస్ నైంటీస్ ఎయిటీస్ అంబేద్కర్ రీడింగ్స్ తెలుగులోకి ట్రాన్స్లేట్ అయ్యాయి అప్పుడు అసలు రౌండ్ స్టార్ట్ అయింది అనేది నా అబ్జర్వేషన్ అంతకుముందు లేని కనెక్షన్స్ అంతకుముందు లేని పాలిటిక్స్ అంతకుముందు లేని అన్నీ కూడా అంబేద్కర్ రైటింగ్స్లో నుండి తెలుగులోకి ట్రాన్స్లేట్ కావడం అప్పుడు సుశీల్ కుమార్ సింధే అని గవర్నర్ ఉండే మాకు తెలుగు స్టేట్స్లో ఆయన అక్కడికి వెళ్ళి ఒక ప్రాజెక్ట్ చేసి అన్ని వర్ణాకులర్ లాంగ్వేజ్లోకి తీసుకురావాలని డిసైడ్ అయినప్పుడు అంబేద్కర్ రైటింగ్స్ మాకు అందుబాటులో వచ్చింది ఇమ్మీడియట్లీ జ్యోతిబా ఫూలే సావిత్రిబాయి ఫూలే రైటింగ్స్ కూడా మెల్లిగా స్టార్ట్ అయిపోయింది అట్లా ఆ లీడర్స్ పరిచయం కావడము అక్కడికి వెళ్ళడము స్కూల్స్లోకి వెళ్ళడము అట్లా కొంత అట్లా అయినప్పుడు నేను ఇంకా మా విధిన్ దళితులలో విధిన్ దళిత్స్ అనే కాడ దళితులలోనే కొన్ని మూమెంట్స్ నడిచినాయి అవి ఊచకోత ఊచకోతల మూమెంట్ అది ఊచకోతల్లోనే సెల్ఫ్ రెస్పెక్ట్ కారం చెడు చెందేది ఆ తర్వాత ఎంఆర్పిఎస్ మాదిగ దండోరా పోరాట సమితి చేసిన వీటన్నిట్లో నేను ఐడెంటిఫై కావడం ఆ విమెన్ ఏం మాట్లాడుతున్నారు సుందూరు విమెన్ కారం చెడు విమెన్ దండోరాలో ఉండే విమెన్ ఏం మాట్లాడుతున్నారు అట్లా ఉంటూ నేను యాజ్ ఏ మాదిగ విమెన్ అప్పుడు రాయడం స్టార్ట్ అయింది అంతకుముందు ఫెమినిస్ట్ లిటరేచర్ కూడా బాగా చదివాను నా ఫ్రెండ్స్ అంతా కూడా ఫెమినిస్ట్ వాళ్ళు కొంత ధైర్యంగా రాశారు ఏంటి అంటే పుత్ర సామ్యానికి వ్యతిరేకంగా రాయడం అంటే ఎందుకు అట్లా ఎంత బాగా రాస్తున్నారు వీళ్ళు సొంత వాళ్ళ తండ్రి గురించి రాస్తున్నారు కొడుకులలో ఉండే పుత్ర సామ్యం గురించి రాస్తున్నారు ఇదంతా ఏంటి అని అంటే ఇది కూడా ఒక ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ అనేది నాకు అనిపించింది అనమాట ఇట్స్ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ఆ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్ ఫెమినిజం ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ నేను చదవడం వల్ల నాకు కూడా ఒక స్ట్రెంగ్త్ ఒక స్ట్రెంగ్త్ లాగా అనిపించడం అక్కడ నేను ఇన్ ఐ స్టార్టెడ్ మై రైటింగ్ ఇన్ మై ఫార్టీ ఇయర్స్ కాబట్టి సో అన్నీ కూడా ఒక మెచ్యూర్గా ఫోకస్గా మెచ్యూర్గా అండ్ బ్రాడ్గా ఉంటూ కాంటెంపరీ ఇష్యూ తీసుకొని రాయడానికి చాలా ఉపయోగపడ్డది ఆ ఉపయోగపడ్డ దాంట్లో నేను రాసింది చాలా చిన్న తక్కువ స్టోరీస్ ఐ లవ్ రీసెర్చ్ రీసెర్చ్ బుక్స్ 
But the short stories is I feel like time pass writing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> when I cool, when I uh, eat full, yes. uh, when I uh, sleep well, then I start short, short stories. stories. <laughs> yeah, that is the short story. But this research is so difficult. You know? Okay. Uh, Chandra's brother is uh, translating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so happy. Uh, Dr. Yes. Shamla was telling she started her career of writing very late, as she said, at the age of 40. So, initially, uh, uh, she started reading uh, whatever the material was available in Telugu, uh, kind of uh, ma magazines. But uh, they didn't give her much knowledge. When she started uh, reading the translated works, particularly uh, the books from Russian language and uh, Chinese language, uh, she started to understand, uh, kind of uh, uh, knowledge started, understanding started. She also started to identify with women characters, particularly from those books, from, from those uh, foreign language books. Uh, but, she, but later when she was reading the vernacular literature, there was a, she could sense the gap uh, between you know, uh, to make her understand, uh, like uh, Guru Shisha uh, relationship. Later, slowly, uh, she grew to the uh, literature of left and uh, Marxist, uh, Naxalite literature, where they speak a lot about killing, sacrifice, police, common, uh, you know, people and their problems. So, uh, uh, when she was reading more of these reports of incidents that were happening in their everyday life, she started to associate more with uh, uh, the suffering and the people. She was thinking that, that even the police also is like my brother. The people who are struggling, who are killed also like my own people. Later when she went to school and college, there was a little gap. She could not focus much on uh, studies because her focus was more on whatever she has been reading. But major thing happened in her life in 1980s. Uh, uh, it was a time where uh, Shishin Kumar Shinde was a <coughs> governor from the British state. He had a project of uh, translating Ambedkar works into the Telugu language. So, in the 1980s, uh, Dr. Bhavasab Ambedkar works have been translated into Telugu language. That was a kind of uh, opening uh, for translation of other uh, uh, thinkers' books like Jyotirao Pule and Savitrubai Pule, where she got more access to read their works and to be influential a lot from their lives. Um, then she also was telling about uh, 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 in you know, the 80s and 90s, mid 80s and 90s, there was this uh, massacre of Param Chedu and Chunduru. When she was reading all those reports and uh, you know newspaper things, what's happening around and this, uh, there uh, in those incidents, she started to identify herself with the problems, with the emotions, with the suffering of the victims. So that influenced her a lot to write. Uh, 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 you know, that has come into her stories, that pain, that emotion. She also was telling about uh, uh, the influence of her friends who are from dominant caste, who wrote against patriarchy. So they were feminists. Uh, they wrote against, you know, uh, their father, patriarchal nature, which was there in their father, uh, uh, in their sons. So she was telling it was a kind of uh, influence of foreign literature. I mean, translated works over them. So that you know gave me to understand these things. Um, yeah, and at the last she said, you know, she likes more. Uh, she likes more on research than uh, writing stories. But uh, yeah, that's what she said. Maybe the other mic. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hello. <coughs> मैं जहाँ से आ रहा हूँ मैं जिस गांव से आ रहा हूँ मैंने मेरे गांव में आज भी लाइब्रेरी नहीं है तहसील ब्लॉक में भी नहीं है मैं जब पढ़ाई कर रहा था दसवीं की तब जिला में भी जिला के मतलब डिस्ट्रिक्ट प्लेस तक भी लाइब्रेरी नहीं देखी हमने 19 साल की उम्र में जब कॉलेज गए तब हमने लाइब्रेरी देखा तो समझ सकते हैं हमने क्या पढ़ा होगा 19 साल तक सिर्फ टेक्स्ट बुक थी हमारे हाथों में और आसपास की नदियां पहाड़ लोग नाचना गाना ये सब था आ, 19 साल की उम्र में जब कॉलेज गए तो 
वहां लाइब्रेरी में प्रोफेसर बोलते थे कि लेखक होता है और उसकी एक बड़ी किताब होती है आपको वो किताब पूरी पढ़ना है पेपर के लिए नहीं पढ़ना है क्वेश्चन आंसर के लिए नहीं पढ़ना है तो हमने नॉवेल क्या होता है पूरा स्टोरी बुक क्या होता है तब जाके गुजराती लिटरेचर में कुछ लोगों को पढ़ा तो ये बहुत संघर्ष की कहानी है एम फिल का जब मैंने अध्ययन शुरू किया तो हमारी भाषा भीली है जो महाराष्ट्र और गुजरात के बॉर्डर पर है ढाई करोड़ से ज्यादा लोग भीली बोलते हैं तो इन भाषाओं में अलग अलग वैरायटी है अलग अलग शाखाएं हैं तो मेरी देहवाली भीली शाखा है देहवाली बोलते हैं तो मैंने अपने कम्युनिटी के एग्रीकल्चर सॉन्ग इकट्ठे करना शुरू किए और फील्ड में जब लोगों लोगों से बात महिलाओं से ज्यादातर मेरा जब गीतों के संदर्भ में मिलना शुरू हुआ तब पता चला कि एक महिला के पास 500 से ज्यादा गीत गाने होते हैं एक एक बुजुर्ग के पास 25 से 50 कहानियां रहती हैं तो ये तो हमने सुनी नहीं थी कभी त्योहारों में गाए जाने वाले गीत वगैरह सुने थे तो बहुत इंटरेस्ट उसमें से अंदर जाने का हुआ तो फिर पीएचडी का स्टडी भी मैंने शुरू किया कि कल्चरल स्टडी पे करेंगे हमारा भीली कल्चर को समझेंगे लिटरेचर को समझेंगे फिर हमारे यहाँ लंबी रात भर कथाएं चलती है पूरी रात भर जब धान फसल खेत में से खलिहान में आता है तो उस वक्त अंतिम दिन होता है फल खलिहान का धान लेने का तो उस टाइम उसी रात वहीं पे कथाएं गाई जाती है तो ऐसी मैंने पांच कथाएं इकट्ठी की और उस पर ये सब सारी कथाएं हमारा इतिहास बया करती है जिसको हम माइथोलॉजिकल कहानियां कहते हैं तो ये हमारी हमारा इतिहास हमारे पुरखे ऐसा ही बोलते हैं कि ये हमारा इतिहास है और उसी को गाया जाता है तो ये कहानियां इकट्ठी की उन कहानियों का अध्ययन शुरू हुआ डॉक्टर गणेश देवी भाषा रिसर्च सेंटर उन्होंने खड़ा किया तो मैं उनके साथ जुड़ गया और कल्पना के बाहर था मेरे मेरी कल्पना के बाहर था कि इतनी बड़ी लाइब्रेरी उनके कैंपस में मैंने देखी पहली बार उन चालीस हजार किताबों की लाइब्रेरी तो मैंने दो साल भाड़े का रूम नहीं लिया किराए का मकान नहीं लिया मैं वहां जुड़ा तो किराए का मकान मैंने नहीं लिया मैंने डॉक्टर देवी को बोल दिया कि मैं आ, मकान नहीं रखना चाहता हूं सर मेरी इच्छा है कि आप मुझे लाइब्रेरी की चाबी रात को दे दें और मैं बच्चों के साथ यहाँ जो बच्चे हैं उनके साथ मैं खाना खा लूंगा दो टाइम का और मैं लाइब्रेरी में सो जाऊंगा तो दो साल मैंने लाइब्रेरी में ही रात को सोया तो पता नहीं क्या पढ़ा है कितना पढ़ा है पर पढ़ा है <laughs> और सबसे ज्यादा मैंने अम्मा मेरे लोगों को पढ़ा है मैं भील बेल्ट में बहुत घूमता रहता हूं तो जितनी भी भील बेल्ट की भाषाएं बोलते हैं लोग वेराइटी मैंने अभी 2019 में गुजरात की आदिवासी कविताओं का एक ट्रांसलेट एक किताब लाया मैं पंद्रह लैंग्वेज है उसमें भीलों के वो मैंने खुद ट्रांसलेट किए सारी कविताएं मैंने ट्रांसलेट की सारी भीली वेराइटी की तो मुझे पता नहीं मैं कहाँ तक जाऊंगा पर आ, कुछ तो हो रहा है मेरे हाथ से और कुछ अभी मैं लोगों को बोल रहा हूँ कि मैं अभी किताबें पढ़ना छोड़ दिया है मैं अब लोगों को मेरे लोगों को पढ़ रहा हूँ ठीक है ट्रांसलेशन सॉरी 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 सो जितेंद्र सेज दैट 
there is no uh, there is no library in my village okay, where I grew up. There wasn't a library even in the tehsil or even in the district. And it was at the age of 19 that I went to college and saw a library for the first time. Uh, we 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 only had textbooks in our in our hands. Uh, we had the hills and uh, and nature and and people, but. Uh, it was only when he went to college at the age of 19 uh, that uh, that reading really happened. And the professor said that uh, you know, here's you know, the, here's a book. You know, the book has a writer, and you have to read the whole book. Yes. So that that you know, that, that is how uh, uh, I began reading some Gujarati literature. And you know, I'm going to add something here that Jitendra did not say which is when he reads in Gujarati, we've had this conversation before, uh, and you know, when, when he reads in Gujarati, he's actually reading a language that is alien to him. Yes. Because it is, he's not reading in his language. Uh, so, uh, Gujarati, so then uh, I started reading Gujarati literature. It, this, is, this is a story of struggle. Uh, my language is Bili, and it is spoken by two and a half crores people uh, in uh, Western India. Uh, there are also you know, different dialects in Bili, and I speak uh, Dewali Bili. So for my MPhil project, I began collecting songs. Uh, and when I met the women who sang these songs, I found that each of the women knew about 500 songs. And uh, when I spoke to the older people, uh, the, the elders, they, they have about 50 to 100 stories in their uh, repertoire. So I began to be interested. And when I started uh, my PhD, I, I began working on Bili culture. So we have these long uh, storytelling sessions at night. Uh, they, they often happen during harvest time. And on, on the last day of the harvest, when it has been collected, uh, these oral stories are told. And I've collected five of these, uh, these long epic stories. And uh, this is also the time uh, when, when I was doing uh, my PhD that I uh, met Dr. Ganesh Devi, who started the Basha Research Center. And when I went to the research center, uh, you know, and then uh, there's also the Adivasi Academy at Tejgar. So when, when I, I went there, that is when I saw a huge library for the for the first time. There were forty thousand books, and you know, I decided I did not want to rent a house or rent a room. I told Dr. Devi, "You give me the keys to the library." And I'll, I'll eat with the, with the children at the school, and I'll sleep in the library. So I, I don't know what what it is that I have read, but I have read. And most of all, uh, I read my people. And uh, I've been working on uh, translating poetry from uh, 15 uh, uh, Adivasi languages. Uh, and, and it's uh, going to come out. It, it, there's one collection that's already come out, and they've been translated into Gujarati from the uh, Adivasi languages, and then he's also, Jitin is also working on uh, translating them into Hindi. So there's another collection in the, in the making, and then we are working on a book together where we are translating uh, poets from uh, Ad Adivasi languages in Western India into English. So I've done a lot of translation of Jitendra's work, but we are now working together on doing an anthology from various languages, uh, various Adivasi, Adivasi languages of Western India. And uh, Jitendra says that, I don't know how far I will go, but I've come this far and we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I asked this question uh, because the writers all, um, you know, while answering this question on translation, uh, sort of took us um, along with them, describing their journeys as writers. And that itself shows the kind of exchange that has been uh, there since the beginning with different kind of languages, uh, the kind of impact uh, material from other cultures, uh, be it Russian or, uh, you know, the neighboring uh, cultures uh, within the regional languages, there has been an excellent exchange within, um, you know, numerous uh, South Indian languages that comes forward. Not only is it the style and the language and the stories that have had an influence, but we also noted that 
the influence goes beyond, as you know, Shamila Ma'am pointed out that uh, there is also a building up of ideologies, political ideologies, engagements, activisms that were shaped through reading as well as writing. So, you know, we tend to see another phase of translation where translation itself gives into uh, creative writing in interesting ways. And then we move to uh, towards the north, uh, as we heard uh, Jitinder Ji talk about his experience, and we realize the broad gap in the reading culture between the south and the north, and obviously it depends on, you know, other questions of accessibility, uh, economical, caste related as well. But we do have this wide gap in the South. We do seem to have a better uh, culture of reading. So, you know. May, uh, I, may I add something sure. here? I think uh, we have to, there's this, a bit of a nuance here because I think we need to understand that where he comes from, the Adivasi belt in Gujarat is where books are not accessible. Yeah. There are people, you yeah. know, like, yeah. like yeah. my mother's example, you know, who's of uh, 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 your generation, she has read a lot of world literature in Gujarati. Yeah, that's she's why I said a lot that, of, you know, there are uh, questions uh, of accessibility based on, you know, uh, the economic factors as well as caste-related factors. So, uh, he gives a new turn to this question of translation as he brings, uh, you know, into account the multiplicity of languages and multiplicity of cultures within which he has circulated, even if they're not textual, you know, he brings forth the kind of orality that he has been surrounded with. And how that has shaped him, not just as a writer, but also as a translator. So thank you so much for keeping time and for responding to this question in ways that I had not imagined. And I would now move to another aspect of translation. Uh, all of you are you know, celebrated writers who have had their works translated. And the writings you know, are uh, not very simple in the sense that they are all quite nuanced with uh, regional specificities uh, in the language as well as in form and in content. There is folklore, there is mythology, there are all kinds of geographical references as well. What do you think of uh, the translation of your works? Have you worked closely with your translators? What are the losses and the gains in your work being translated? என்னுடைய புத்தகங்கள் வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு இங்கிலீஷில் ஒரு ஃபிஃப்டீன் புக்ஸு ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் ஆகிருக்கு அது இல்லாமல் வேறு இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ்க்கு போயிருக்கு வேறு ஐரோப்பிய மொழிகளுக்கும் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆகிருக்கு இப்போ அதனுடைய அது அந்த ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் எப்படி இருக்குது என்ன அப்படிங்கிறத வந்து எல்லா மொழியையும் படித்து கம்பேர் பண்ணி ஜட்ஜ் பண்ணுற அளவுக்கு எனக்கு தெரியாது பொதுவாக இப்போ இங்கிலீஷில் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் அதை ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் ஆனவங்களை படிச்சுட்டு இங்கிலீஷ் ரீடர்ஸ் சொல்கிறது அப்புறம் கிரிட்டிக் சொல்கிறது அந்த மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள்ல இருந்து தான் நான் சில விஷயங்களை புரிஞ்சுருந்தேன் அப்புறம் இன்னொன்று என்ன அப்படின்னா அந்த ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட்டர்ஸ் என்னோட என்ன எந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு உரையாடல் நிகழ்த்துறாங்கிறத பொறுத்தும் சில விஷயங்களை என்னால் புரிஞ்சுக்க முடியும் இப்போ என்னுடைய புத்தகங்களை நிறைய நாலஞ்சு பேர் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஃபஸ்ட்டு வந்து வி கீதா டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபைவில் ரெண்டு புக்கு பண்ணாங்க சீசன்ஸ் ஆஃப் த பாம் கரண்ட் ஷோ இது ரெண்டும் பண்ணாங்க அப்போ பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அவங்க என்ன செய்வாங்கன்னா அவங்க அவங்களுக்கு வரக்கூடிய சந்தேகங்கள் எல்லாம் அவங்க வரிசையாக நோட் பண்ணி வச்சுக்குவாங்க நான் சென்னை போகும்போதோ அல்லது இந்த மாதிரி வேறு ஏதாவது மீட்டிங்க்கு வரும்போதோ நாங்கள் ரெண்டு பேரும் சந்திக்கிறதுக்கு ஒரு பிளான் பண்ணிக்குவோம் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு அந்த அவங்களுடைய சந்தேகங்கள்லாம் அவங்க கேட்பாங்க நான் அதுக்கெல்லாம் பதில் சொல்லி அதை வந்து கிளாரிஃபை பண்ணிக்கிட்டு அப்புறம் வந்து அதை சரி பண்ணிக்குவாங்க அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு உரையாடல் வந்து அவங்களோட தொடர்ந்து இருந்தது முக்கியமாக அவங்களுக்கு என்ன பிரச்சனை இருந்ததுன்னா அவங்க தமிழ் நல்லா தெரிஞ்சவங்க தமிழ்நாட்டை சேர்ந்தவங்க அப்படின்னு இருந்தாலும் இந்த டைலாக்ட் வந்து பிரச்சனையாக இருந்துச்சு ஆமாம் அது எங்கள் பகுதியினுடைய பேச்சு அதுவும் எங்கள் பகுதியில் நகரத்தில் இல்லாமல் கிராமங்களில் பேசக்கூடிய பேச்சு 
அதுல நிறைய வார்த்தைகள் புதுசு புதுசா இருக்கும் அப்ப அந்த மாதிரியானதெல்லாம் தவறான அர்த்தம் வந்துடக்கூடாது அப்படிங்கிறதுக்கு அவங்க அதை குறிச்சு வச்சிருப்பாங்க நான் வந்து ஒரு டிக்ஷனரி டைலக்ட் டிக்ஷனரி கொங்கு வட்டார சொல்லகராதின்னு ஒரு டிக்ஷனரி தயார் பண்ணியிருந்தேன் அந்த டிக்ஷனரியை அவங்க டிரான்ஸ்லேஷனுக்கு ரொம்ப பயன்படுத்த அதே மாதிரி ஒன் பார்ட் டூ மண் இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு நாலு நாலஞ்சு நாவல்களை அனிருத்தர் வாசுதேவன் அவர் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணார் அவருடைய இதுலேயும் இந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு பிரச்சனை தான் அவருக்கும் அந்த டைலாக்ட் வந்து பிரச்சனையாக இருந்துச்சு அது எல்லாமே ரெண்டு பேரும் நாங்கள் கலந்து பேசி அந்த பிரச்சனையை தீர்த்து வைப்போம் அப்போ என்னென்னா அவங்க பேசும்போது அவங்களுக்கு எது எதுலையெல்லாம் சிக்கல் வருது அப்படிங்கிறத என்னால் புரிஞ்சிக்க முடிஞ்சுது அது நீங்கள் பின்னாடி இவர் கல்யாணராமன் நந்தினி கிருஷ்ணன் இவங்களாமும் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க அதில் இல்லாமல் வரும்போது இந்த டைலாக்ட் தான் ரொம்ப முக்கியமான ஒரு பிரச்சனையாக இருந்தது தமிழ்நாடு தமிழுக்கு வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு ஆறு வகையான டைலாக்ட் பெரிய அளவுக்கு மேஜராக எடுத்தோம்னா இருக்குது தமிழில் அப்போ ஒருத்தருக்கு வந்து எல்லா டைலாக்டும் புரியும்னு சொல்ல முடியாது புரியும்னா என்ன சில குறிப்பான சில வார்த்தைகளுக்கு அதுவும் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணும்போது கரெக்ட் சரியான ஒரு அர்த்தம் வரணும் அப்படின்னு அவங்க முயற்சி பண்ணுறாங்க அப்போ அது வந்து ஒரு பெரிய சிக்கலாக இருக்குதுங்கிறத நான் பார்த்தேன் நிறைய பேர் கேட்குறாங்க நீங்கள் ஒரு தமிழில் எழுதும்போது நீங்கள் உங்கள் டைலக்டில் எழுதுறீங்க இங்கிலீஷில் போகும்போது அப்படி இல்லையே அது ஒரு ஜென்ரல் இங்கிலீஷில் தான் இருக்குது அது லாஸ் இல்லையா அப்படின்னு கேட்குறாங்க நம்ம அது நம்ம அது லாஸாக அப்படிங்கிறது எனக்கு சொல்ல முடியல ஏன்னா இப்போ இங்கிலீஷில் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு வட்டார மொழியில் அதை டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ண முடியுமான்னு எனக்கு தெரியல அது இப்போ இந்தியன் இங்கிலீஷ்னா இங்கிலீ இந்தியன் இங்கிலீஷில் அந்த மாதிரியான டைலாக்ட் எல்லாம் இருக்குதான்னு எனக்கு தெரியல அதனால ஒரு பொது இங்கிலீஷில் தான் அது பண்ண முடியும் அப்போ ஒரு இந்த மண் சார்ந்த விஷயங்கள்லாம் அதில் இல்லாமல் போயிடுதே ஏன்னா மொழி ஒரு டைலாக்டில் அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு மண் சார்ந்த விஷயங்கள்லாம் இருக்குது அப்போ அதெல்லாம் இல்லாமல் போயிடுதேன்னு கேட்குறாங்க அது ஒரு வகையில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அது லாஸ்னு தான் சொல்லணும் அதே சமயம் கெயின் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நான் எங்கே ஏதோ ஒரு மூளையில் ஒரு சின்ன கிராமத்து வாழ்க்கையை நான் எழுதுகிறேன் அதை வேற எங்கேயும் இருக்க வேற நிலப்பரப்பில் இருக்கக்கூடிய வேற நாட்டை சேர்ந்த இதுக்கும் அதுக்கும் சம்மந்தமே இல்லாத மக்கள்கிட்ட இது போய் சேருது அது அவங்க வந்து இப்படி ஒரு எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஒரு புது எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸை அவங்க வந்து எடுத்துக்கிறாங்க இப்போ நான் ரஷ்யன் நாவல்கள் படிக்கும்போது ஸ்டெப்பி புல்வெளி அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் அதில் வந்து ஏதோ அது பார்த்தது கூட கிடையாது என்ன ஆனால் அது அதை படிக்கிறது மூலமாகவே ஒரு கற்பனை வச்சுக்கிட்டு அதுக்குள்ளே நுழைஞ்சு நாம் வர்ற மாதிரியான ஃபீலிங் வரும் அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு விஷயம் வந்து நம்ம படைப்புகள் மூலமாகவும் எங்கெங்கேயோ இருந்து படிக்கக்கூடியவர்களுக்கு கிடைக்குது அப்படிங்கிறது ஒரு பெரிய கெயின்னு நான் பார்க்குறேன் இன்னொரு இன்னும் ஒன்றே ஒன்று சொல்லணும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணும்போது இப்போ நான் ஒரிஜினலில் எழுதக்கூடிய சில இடங்கள் வந்து தமிழ் வாசகர்கள் புரிஞ்சிடும்னு நினச்சிட்டு நான் எழுதுவேன் அப்போ பார்த்தீங்கன்னா டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணும்போது டிரான்ஸ்லேட்டர்ஸ் இந்த இடம் தெளிவில்லாமல் இருக்குது அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க இது அவங்க கேட்கக்கூடிய கேள்வி அவங்களுக்கு தெளிவில்லைன்னு சொல்லக்கூடிய இடங்கள் இதை அவங்களுக்கு தெளிவுபடுத்திட்டு அதற்கப்புறம் நான் தமிழ்லேயும் அந்த இடத்த தெளிவு பண்ணுறேன் அப்போ என்ன ரெண்டாவது பதிப்பு மூணாவது பதிப்பில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னு சொன்னால் அந்த மாதிரியான சில தெளிவுகள் வந்து நான் தமிழ்லேயும் பண்ணுறேன் ஆக அது ஒரு பெரிய கெயின் எனக்கு சுபார் ஐ ஹாவ் பெருமாள் முருகன் சாரி ஐ கிப் சிங் ஐ ஓன் சோ ஃபார் ஐ ஹேவ் ஃபிஃப்டீன் புக்ஸ் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட்டட் இன் டூ இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ மெனி ஆஃப் மை புக்ஸ் ஹேவ் கம் இன் யூரோப்பியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் அதர் இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ் ஐ ஹேவ் சோ ஃபார் ஒர்க் டூ தட் ஈஸ் ஃபைவ் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட்டர்ஸ் ஃபார் மை இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ட்ஸ் I have to say that uh, I do not always read, for instance, if it comes in another European language, I do not always read the book or understand what's happening. So my perception of the translation could be through what the readers say and what the critics say and what, is, uh, what you know, the reviews say. Um, and uh, I want to sequentially speak about my experience with various translators. So my first translator was uh, V. Geeta. Uh, she did Seasons of the Palm and Current Show. And... Um, Uh, the procedure or the way we would work with each other is that uh, she would uh, note down all her doubts or where she felt was stumbling blocks in the text and uh, on my visits to chennai or if we were meeting in a common meeting like this we would sit and discuss it 
and it was a process of continuous dialogue and I would clarify to her what the things which were doubtful for her. And uh, at that time, very early on, I realized that one of the big uh, difficulties for a translator was the use of dialect. Because even if she was a Tamil speaker, even if she actually lived in Tamil Nadu in Chennai, she was not always aware of you know the nuances of language that was used in my rural area. And there were a lot of new terms and she was not aware. And she was also conscious not to make any mistakes or make any mistranslations. Um, and uh, I had actually compiled um, a regional language dictionary of sorts for the Congo belt, uh, the Congo region. And so this dictionary was very helpful for her to write uh, and to translate my work. Uh, and then again, I worked with uh, Aniruddin Vasudevan, who translated four or five of my novels, including the famous uh, One Part Woman. And uh, once again, I realized that uh, the conflicting place was the use of dialect. So again, this was clarified through mutual discussion and we would discuss. Uh, the same thing happened when Kalyan Raman translated my work on Nandini Krishnan. So what I would like to say is that Tamil uh, language has at least six, or, uh, six major dialects and uh, it's very important that translators get the right meaning. Um, and when this comes into a, a larger debate, people of course ask me, do you think there is a loss in literature because you know you were writing in a very particular, di in a very specific dialect, very specific to a region and they also tell me that a dialect is rooted in the land. And so isn't there a loss of all of these very particular things? And then I actually think that um, uh, how does how do we translate this into English? Is it possible to employ some other dialect when you're translating? And the second thing is, does Indian writing in English itself uh, reflect any dialect of any sort? And then I go back into thinking that, uh, you know, on the one hand, of course, it is true that there is loss, but I'm also happy that there are gains, and these gains are twofold. And the first way in which I see the gains happening is that uh, I write about stories of people, ordinary people in a small village in rural Tamil Nadu in a specific region, the Congo region. And for me, it's amazing that this people's story goes internationally, goes to other parts of the world. It resonates with them. And uh, I also look at this experience through a kind of internalization. Because when I read about Russia and Russian literature, and I read about the story of the steppe, steppe grasslands or something, I have not seen it. But then I visualize it, and then I enter this world through my imagination. And I think that uh, readers who read my work are invited in the same way to come and to read my work and to experience it. Um, and uh, the second thing I would like to say is that, you know, when I write in Tamil, I uh, assume that the Tamil reader is going to understand something and therefore they're going to, uh, you know, um, read my work and uh, absorb it. But sometimes my translators bring to me issues where they say, well, this is not very clear, this needs a little bit of exposition. And sometimes it does help me because, you know, there could be gaps. And these type of, you know, gaps that exist or small clarifications, I try to incorporate it in the second or the third editions of my book. So this is another form in which I gain through the work of my translators. Molly <laughs> And the novel a Maruru comes in as a Rumba Elidano or Sema and I pome partala. Padipal Yudia, Madamele, and the Muli and the Man Apro on the Valka, Yella Sam the Da or Mulivate Palla, Lord Pandavendir. Yanak the Nal Mulivate Palla and that's an Amila more Castor Molivare Palar and Kanduik, the number of the Silver and Kanga, and a pair of Illa. Over now, the co-worker would not put them in the visit. Mother Laval would put up a less me for Nanga, less me on the UK Lernanga. If a hunger and a second novel can under put up a WhatsApp like Alpani and the Nanamuka company and pay somebody other than the sooner than me அவங்களுக்கு சந்தேகம் இருக்கு அதெல்லாம் நான் நோட் பண்ணிட்டு மெயில்ல எழுதுவாங்க போடுவாங்க நான் மெயில்ல ரிப்ளை பண்ணுவேன் ஆனா அது ரொம்ப காம்ப்ளிகேட்டடா தான் இருந்துது ஏனா அவங்க வந்து 25 ವರ್ಷத்துக்கு முன்னாடியே அவங்க UK போய் செட்டில் ஆயிட்டாங்க அவங்களுக்கு இந்த லாங்குவேஜ் அப்புறம் என்னோட இஸ்லாமிய பின்புலம் ஏனா எனக்கு இந்த மதர் லாங்குவேஜ் நான் பேசنا ரெண்டாவது வார்த்தையில எல்லாரும் சொல்வாங்க நீ மதர கரியன் கேப்பாங்க என்னோட லாங்குவேஜ் மூலத்துல நான் வெளிய வட்டார வழக்கு அப்புறம் எங்களுடைய உறவு முறைகள் 
அப்புறம் பழக்க வழக்கங்கள் அப்புறம் பழமொழிகள் இது எல்லாமே ரொம்ப டிஃப்ரெண்டாக இருக்குது இஸ்லாமிய கலாச்சாரம் அது எல்லாமே ரொம்ப வேறுபட்ட ஒன்று அவங்களுக்கு அதுக்குள்ளே போகிறது ரொம்ப கஷ்டம்தான் இருந்தாலும் ரெண்டு பேரும் அவங்க மெயில் பண்ணுவாங்க அப்புறம் வர்றப்போ ஒரு மணி நேரில் உட்காந்து எல்லாத்தையும் அவங்களுக்கு புரியாத விஷயங்கள் ஏன்னா மெயில் பண்ணியும் புரியாது சில விஷயங்கள் இது என்ன இது என்ன என்னன்னு திரும்ப திரும்ப கேட்பாங்க பட் எனக்கு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணுறது ரொம்ப கஷ்டமாக இருக்கும் அப்புறம் நேரில் ஒரு முறை வந்து ரெண்டு பேர் ஒரு ஒன் ஹவர் ரெண்டு ஹவர் இப்படி உட்காந்து ரெண்டு மூணு முறை ஒர்க் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அப்படி தான் அந்த நாவல் வந்தது அதான் வட்டார வழக்கு மிஸ் ஆகிடும் அதில் வந்து நம்ம சந்தேகம் இல்லை கீ ராஜ்நாராயணோடைய நாவல்லாம் நம்ம பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதுதான் ரொம்ப அதனுடைய பலமாக இருக்கும் ஸ்ட்ரென்த்துன்னு நம்ம சொல்லுவோம் பட் அது மொழிபெயர்க்கப்படுறப்ப அது இல்லாமல் போயிடும் நமக்கு அது கதையாக போய் சேரும் மக்கள்கிட்ட அதுவே போதும் அப்படின்னா நம்ம ஏன்னா எல்லாத்தையும் நம்ம எதிர்பார்க்க முடியாது இப்போ என்னோட சின்ன கிராமத்தில் இருக்கக்கூடிய பெண்களுடைய வாழ்க்கை அப்புறம் அது அதில் இருக்கக்கூடிய துயரங்கள் இது எல்லாத்தையும் வந்து ஏதோ ஒரு அந்நிய மொழியில் ஜெர்மனியில் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு வாசகனிடம் கொண்டு செல்றதுங்கிறது அதுவே போதுமான ஒன்று அதன் மூலமாக நமக்கு ஏதோ ஒரு விஷயங்களை வந்து நம்ம கம்யூனிகேட் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அப்படின்னு இப்போ மராட்டியில் இருந்து மொழியில் பயிர்ப்பில் போனப்போ நிறைய பேர் வந்து மெயில் போட்டுகிட்டே இருப்பாங்க இன்றைக்கு வரைக்கும் எனக்கு மெயில் வரும் காரணம் என்னென்னா இந்த லைஃபை ஈக்குவலாக தான் அங்கே இருக்கக்கூடிய பெண்களும் ஒரே மாதிரியான லைஃப் வாழ்ந்துட்டு இருக்காங்க அப்படிங்கிற அந்த ஒப்பிட்டு தன்மையோடு அந்த மெயிலாக வரும் அது ரொம்ப எனக்கு சாக்கிங்காக இருக்கும் வந்து அப்போது எல்லா இந்தியாவில் இது ஒட்டு மொத்தமாக இப்படி தான் பெண்களுடைய லைஃப்ங்கிறத நமக்கு ஒரு புரிஞ்சுக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு வாய்ப்பு இருக்கும் அப்போது வந்து வட்டார வழக்கை நம்ம கொண்டு வர முடியாது ஆனால் ஒரு மீனாவும் நானும் ஒர்க் பண்ணப்போ வாட்ஸ்அப்பில் நாங்கள் நிறைய விஷயங்கள் அவங்க குழந்தையோட ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்பட்டுட்டு தான் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருந்தாங்க இருந்தாலும் டெய்லி ஏதாவது டைம் அவங்க லண்டனில் இருந்தாங்க நான் இங்கே அப்போது அவங்க கூப்பிட்ற டைமுக்கு எனக்கு வித்தியாசம் இருக்கும் எந்த டைம் சில கேள்விகள் அனுப்பிட்டு வெயிட் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருப்பாங்க அப்புறம் நான் கூப்பிட்டு பேசேன் இந்த போல் அவர் ரெண்டு சேர்ந்து உருவாக்குன ஒரு படைப்பாக தான் அந்த மொழியாக மொழியாக்கத்தை நான் பார்க்குறேன் ரெண்டு சேர்ந்து கொண்டு வர விஷயம் தான் ஒப்பிட்டு பார்த்து இது சரியா வந்திருக்கு இது சரியில்லை அப்படின்னு சொல்றது அளவுக்கு நமக்கு தெரியாது எந்த மாதிரினா நம்ம எல்லா மொழியும் நமக்கு தெரியாது இல்லையா அதனால ஆனா நம்ம சொல்ல வந்த விஷயங்கள் வாசகர்கள்ட்ட போய் சேர்ந்துருக்கு அது போதுமான ஒன்னா நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அதுதான் ஒரு எதிர்பார்ப்பும் கூட அந்த எதிர்பார்ப்பை தாண்டி நம்ம வேற எதுவும் ரைட்டருக்கு இருக்காது பல மொழிகளுக்கு போயிருக்கு பலருக்கு போய் ஒரே மொழியில வாசிக்கிற விட பல பேர் வாசிச்சிருக்காங்கிற ஒரு நிறைவு அது போதுமானதா இருக்கு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் and i feel very bad because if sama had criticism she cannot say this to my face <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's also i'm going to add a little bit sama didn't say um i remember when i was translating her work actually i was carrying my second child now you see him running around he's 4 years old this is the first time i met sama since my book is out so we just really couldn't meet in person that's what happened because of covid so you know we had no publicity we had no events this is literally the kind of first event for the book like the book is not here but that's how time flies okay now um, uh, i'm going to translate salma yeah so what she says is that uh, when a translator is working on a novel i believe that uh, they are recreating the novel once again and uh, it requires a lot of um, understanding first of the mindset of the creator the mental state of the creator the language of the creator the region of the creator the background of the creator and the second thing is that uh, so far i have had to work with uh, four different translators for my novels and my uh, fiction or poetry this is also because in the tamil landscape there are not many translators and so for every novel i have actually had to work with a different translator so uh, my first translator was uh, lakshmi homstrom um she worked my uh, on my first novel and she used to email me her doubts but this was al- always not the most comfortable medium for me because um i would try to reply to her but there was still be gaps for me it was a question that uh, she had left india about 25 years ago and also the fact that you know i come from a specific region like you know when i speak tamil people immediately say oh are you from madurai because you know my language is from where i am from and also my islamic background and the fact that you know uh, kinship terms or kinship uh, words are very specific to specific communities and specific regions and also the use of proverbs uh, which you know would throw any translator and um, so this kind of made it a little bit complicated i think i went through the same kind of issues with meena as well but we were on whatsapp which kind of allowed us but then meena was also struggling with her babies 
<laughs> so, and our time zones were very different. Um, and she also says that with Lakshmi, um, she met her in person and it helped a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, I believe that, you know, when we translate, there is always the loss of dialect. Uh, and uh, it's sometimes, uh, for, like with the works of uh, Rajana Rain and others, uh, in the Tamil original, the dialect is the most strong aspect of the text. And uh, But when the translation happens, only the story is delivered and the strength of the dialect is lost. And um, But I mean, somehow I take consolation in the fact that sometimes at least the story is communicated. That, uh, and uh, when the, my novel appeared in Marathi, I keep getting emails and you know messages from people saying that their experiences are very similar. And sometimes for me, it's um, I'm very shocked that uh, the life of the Indian woman, irrespective of where they are, is so similar to each other. And this is the, I understand this is the life of women in India. And, um, and I'm also, yeah, I'm, anyway, I'm happy that, you know, uh, I think that as a, as a writer, I cannot compare the translation and the, and the original writing and say which is what, because um, none of us are in that sense extremely familiar with two language sets like that. Uh, but I'm very happy and uh, comfortable that audiences are, you know, getting to read my work. In our Kavivai, when the Mudira po, we read the, yeah, in our Madhyanan Mudi, the Yoni Mudi. Ah, but the translate pandra po, on the Kavivai, when the translate pandra, the last time when the open mail like have been read, translate panna. Ena, and the inhibitions when the uh, translator Kirkrapo, Varakuri Chikil, the Laduna Napaka. And on the Kavide Pachit, the one Mulume I lab being the right by the Lanuna Pilpana. Lenny on the Vajina Ninja use Pana, Dinsoli, Tirumba Tirma, the Sulia, the use part of the Navati, quarter the case, the translator Apro the Pandanga. Um, I want to point out to something that uh, happened when Lakshmi Holmstrom was translating my work. In one of my poems, the last line goes that uh, there is some um, which translates um, literally into my vagina opens, and uh, she was um, she was constant constantly translating it as my legs are opening or my legs open. And it was because she was feeling very inhibited and I had to push back and I had to say that if I was using the word Yoni, I expect you to use the word vagina. And uh, I had to get her. And I think that these kind of trappings of the translator actually affect the production of the text. I had some incident about uh, Lakshmi. See, Lakshmi is a great translator in the sense that she took a lot of Tamil literature global. But I also think she had a very sheltered Brahmin life and not used to colloquialism. So yes. I think in one of the translations, in Tamil, I think the word is Pai Yudhikirabu. Uh, she really <laughs> translated a spread the mattress. <laughs> it literally means fuck with someone. <laughs> but I think that, you know, this kind of colloquialism is absolutely lost because of very literal translation. And I think it's because of very less exposure to language. So something that uh, I have also been thrown by, like, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's just funny. Yeah, I had a similar experience to that. <laughs> yeah. So, I've been working on a, yeah, on translating, like, so, um, I've been working on translating a Marathi ballad novel uh, into English. And there was some editorial intervention where, you know, this is a very quirky Dalit narrator a uh, young man who's uh, you know, who, who like who as he's walking is talking about the things that he sees, and one of the things that he describes is he's sitting on a bench, you know, at the railway track. There's a pond. There's a, uh, there's a tree under the tree. There are two donkeys, and he is literally saying that the uh, the donkey is trying to mate with the female donkey, and then he tries and he fails and he tries again, and then finally he's able to mate with her. And he actually uses the word mate, and then he talks about how it is, and then this is where the caste aspect comes in, equality, and so forth, how this is, you know, this is a mating without any trappings of social hierarchy. And that, that's his observation. And the English editors who were trying to edit this basically 
wanted to take the word mate out and talked about how the donkey approached the female donkey with intention. <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 is, it is, when we are talking about uh, dialect and you're talking about uh, literature, especially from marginalized communities and the language that is used, I think it's, it's, uh, it's very problematic. Even, it's not just the English translation that is sometimes problematic, but it is also editorial interventions uh, that can be problematic at times. Translation palla na ko nastamiy mi jargale do. Indu panante asal translation na ko kapeda space nu kapeda prapancha ni create jeshan tan pichin. Actually ga e translation palla chinnna ga jargi na padhi ni ekwa benefit ay na tan pichin. In the translation, I have a benefit in it. I have a great recognition in the world. In the literature, I have a great translation in the translation. I have a translation in the untouchability, hiding, invisible, and break. ना कभी अनपिच नहीं तो कहते हैं अंतक मंदु ने चाला आ कम्युनिटी आ फैमिली आ कन्नूडे वाला स्रेमा वाला अनटचिबिलिटी आदम तक सुस कुंटो पेरी ना पेरू तो नहीं तो कूड़ा चाला पंजेशन का नहीं रेकग्नेशन लेगू कहने से कभी ट्रांसलेशन वाला माय शार्ट स्टोरी संडे लाइक माय स्माल किड्स ये किड्स व केवल हम ट्रांसलेशंस वाला मात्र में ने निकट कोच्चन इनका ट्रांसलेशन वाला मात्र में ना माइंड स्प्रेड है चादवड़ा मुंह में इनका ट्रांसलेशन फेमिनिज्म ट्रांसलेटेड फेमिनिज्म ट्रांसलेटेड अदर रेवोल्यूशनरी लेफ्ट वाट वाला आलोचन सड़ा मार्गन तक नेट्स कुन्ना आई थे इकड़ा इंटरनेट ये ये ट्रांसलेशन अनेक दी आह का चिन्ना स्पेस नहीं आह बाइट प्रपंचान के गुरु जय हम ना दी चाला लिमिटेड स्पेस इन माय तेलुगु एरिया तेलुगु इज सो मेनी डायलेक्ट्स सो मेनी कास्ट्स सो मेनी रीजियंस इवन सांस्कृतिकाइजेशन तेलुगु इज देर uh, Andhra Telugu is there. Even Hyderabadi Telugu is there. Mine is uh, border Karnataka Telugu. Karnataka Telangana Telugu. Uh, very limited space. Adi Chala Guppa richness in Telugu and in Filauta. And the Sanskrit Unda. आ लैंग्वेज अंतक कोड़ा वो का एग्रीकल्चर नुंडी आ पानी नुंडी आक्यूपेशन नुंडी फार्माइन अ लैंग्वेज आदि चाला गुप्पा उन तुंडी ने नू मेनस्ट्रीम बुक्स वो अवनी चादवना पुरु आधे कड़ा माल लाइफ एक कड़ा काना पढ़ लेते इवन ने फार्टी इयर्स को राशन अपड़ की नहीं साहित्यम लो का ग्याप � निजंगा चाला विषय आलू बैठ कुछ नहीं पिलला स्टोरी संटे इन दुक्कल उन्नप माय चेल्डूड स्टोरीस पिलला स्टोरी क्या टकिरे किंदा रावड़म एनवायरनमेंटल स्टोरीस मेडिसिनल प्लांट स्टोरीस म्यूजिक स्टोरीस डब्बु मेकिंग स्टोरीस इवन फूड स्टोरीस लाइक लव स्टोरीस इवन नी उड़े चिन्ना स्टोरीस नूनी � इनका नष्टम होने टें नष्टम ही लेते हो उन्नत आने वाला पिद्दल आ रहा हूँ कहनी हाँ हाँ आदि चाल इम्पोर्टेंट तो थैंक यू आई थे राइटर्स ट्रांसलेट जैसे तो पुरु वाले वर्ना थेलियन वाले आ रहे हो वो कटेन इयर्स वाला तो ना जर्नी उन्हें वाला फ्रेंडशिप वाला अंदर 
was a part of my job, my research work in Anveshi. Anveshi friends were all under good. For 10 years, we were able to do intimacy. Intimacy and respect. Um, a politics smart lad and a moon, while Vinadani kiss it than Gundadamo, while would respect Jedamo. I know Pumatrame, I intimacy to Sadimendi, Okoka story kid Adapu. Uh, hours of hours we sat together, uh, we discussed so many. Can you Kunisarlo Kunisarlo Walukuda Kunta Matlan Napudu Nenu open the chip peri, metaphor Sabdanga. Can you? Nenu will under Lucy name Malaikul Rayali and enter will translate Jayale Ru and Jepikoni Drapaina. And then Chala pleasant to the short stories, childhood stories. Inka first item in enter Gavali as a writer, story writer. Enter Intervata in the serious issues Rayal Shnausra Mundi. Atla Ameraku Chala Oka intimacy to conversation to Chala Sartlu Gutsoda Malla, Ayinde Adikuda. It's not just language persons, there are also some political and secular feminist Kabate Sadima Indian in Amputunam. Aina Aina Kuni problems under the Unai open ga. Open gante, navi na personal gal. Ma community people, oka Brahmin ni etla express jes taru, oka Reddy ni etla express jes taru, oka Reddy women ni etla, oka Velama women ni etla matlar tarra. Vendi ne saithyam lo raya lante na chuttunu level translate jes tarra jeppi vetu ko vali ne. Ne inka sophisticated ga raya damu, kunta political ga raya, ma political person. No. <laughs> Political ride, a readability pension, first to life so, uh, introduced Kavali, Oka Madiga identity, and the Oka 10, 15, 20 years Madiga Dandora movement to Narchin within the little. So many uh, Chala politics and the law, identity policy, graded inequality politics, uh, even Telangana politics. With Anit Madelo, Nenu, Ride Manibi uh, uh, challenge. I enjoyed. Yes. Uh, but translation in the Chala Jargal Sundi. Vishimin and in Chala influence in a very languages though, very culture though, China, Russia, and the culture to name influence in But this is the first influence uh, to others. Na writing so first to Walan influence Jayabotun, Yadi Chala Chinder. Um, biography. One first cabinet minister of scavenging community, Idi Telvulo only, Idi Nalapodu ani Dalita Strila Dalit women literature anthology, Idi Telvulo only. Inka Kuni anthology su Dadapoka seven books Telvulo only. Aveni would English la coste, Apudu Kasta Dalit life, Dalit women life, English la cochina too. Kunta untun than a feeling, Naku into me. Kavati Adi Kun Chala Takwa in the Nedina feeling. Yeah, Dr. Shamala tells that there is no loss um, for her. I mean, because of translation, there was no loss. Uh, in fact, it gave her space to reach to the wider audience. Uh, she is telling the books which have been, which she read, the translated works which she read, influenced her. And she's so happy that now her translated work influencing others, others in a sense, people who read only English. Um, she states that there is no recognition for there is uh, for their work, their suffering in general in village. Same thing happened even in literature also. But translation, which is something which really brought her recognition because of these translated uh, works. Um, she tells us, she, she, I mean, what she was telling was during translation process, uh, I think there are 12 people who translated. She knew all of them personally. Mm -hmm. They knew each other uh, more than 10 years uh, as she was working in uh, Anveshi. Those people from various backgrounds, politicians, activists, writers, 
uh, in teaching uh, you know profession so it was easy for her to see uh, her works coming out but she tells there are still many more books to be translated into english for example her books this is first uh, dalit women anthology in telugu language it came around 2002 or 3 but it didn't come out in english same thing this is the autobiography of a, uh, a women politician a very strong woman from telangana from the dalit community it didn't come in english so she says there are some more books which have to be translated into english if that work is done then there will be more access uh, uh, more recognition to these uh, writers she also tells that she can write more i mean she wants to there is certain language which her own community people use in relation to dominant caste people what they speak about uh, brahmin women about some uh, dominant caste people that that colloquial language but she can't put it she can't write it because when it will go for translation there will be a problem as uh, uh, sarma madam was telling so there is uh, this problem uh, uh, she is telling and she also said that her language is very you know rich and beautiful uh, generally in telugu there are uh, many dialects uh, andhra pradesh divided into three regions again three regions have various dialects her dialect is uh, you know where people speak uh, live uh, in the border area karnataka and the telangana border area which doesn't have a sanskrit influence uh, if if we read the telugu her book it doesn't have a single sanskrit word i particularly read it in telugu for uh, this thing it doesn't have so she wants to bring that because her language is filled it has generate it has come from the words have come from nature from agriculture the language the words which they use are from this um, yeah uh, that is what um, dr uh, shamala said and she also you know she, the great thing is she wrote in the middle of when this telangana movement was happening and madiga dalara movement was happening she took up writing these stories which was uh, a great thing uh, she was telling okay. uh अनुवाद के आप सब लोगों के कुछ न कुछ अनुभव तो है छः सात में मैंने एग्रीकल्चर जो सॉन्ग थे उनका भीली से गुजराती मैंने ट्रांसलेट किया और तब तो इतना वो नहीं था पहला काम था तो ट्रांसलेशन का इतना मीनिंगफुल पावर ट्रांसलेशन हम नहीं कर पाए ऐसा मुझे लग रहा है पर जैसे आ, काम शुरू किया 2008 के बाद एक लखारा मैगजीन शुरू किया और भीली जितने भी लिखने वाले राइटर्स थे गुजरात महाराष्ट्र मध्य प्रदेश राजस्थान से तो उनकी कुछ कविताओं को छापने का काम शुरू किया प्रकाशित करने का तो उस कविताओं को समझना ये बहुत ही आ, अपने आप में एक संघर्ष है और सबसे बड़ा संघर्ष है औरल कहानियों को ट्रांसलेट करना ये मैंने 2012 से काम शुरू किया और जब ये लंबी कहानियाँ एक तो रिकॉर्ड करना और इस रिकॉर्ड करने के बाद उनको सुनना सुनने के बाद लिखना लिखे हुए पर फिर से दूसरी भाषा में उसको उतारना ये सबसे बड़ा कठिन काम है क्योंकि आदमी में किसी कुछ गाने ऐसे हैं कहानियों में क्योंकि कहानी गीत कहानी गद्य पद्य सब साथ में चलता है तो जैसे एक गाना है ढोलापूत नाम की एक कथा कहानी है तो वो जो कहानी है उसमें जो गाना है वो जो मेन कैरेक्टर है पोहलिया नाम से वो पावरी बजा रहा है और बजाते वक्त वो नाच रहा है और नाचते नाचते गीत गा रहा है तो गीत में पावरी में जो गाना बजा रहा है वो गीत गा रहा है तो वो गा रहा है कि उलवा रुलवा रिंग डोरो उलवा रुलवा रिंग मोटे कुलेवा रिंग डोरो मोटे कुलेवा रिंग साबड़ो मुईवा रिंग डोरो साबड़ो मुईवा रिंग डोरो मैंने आज भी 
वो रिंग डोरो क्या क्या मतलब है मुझे भी नहीं पता गाने वालों को भी नहीं पता हाँ, मतलब आप समझ सकते हैं कि कहानी औरल कहानियों को ट्रांसलेट करना ये बहुत कठिन काम है आप किसी की किताब उठा लो और उसको ट्रांसलेट कर दो वो बहुत सरल काम है मुझे लगता है कि वो सरल है पर जब लोगों की मेमोरी को ट्रांसफर करना कागज पर और उस कागज से फिर दूसरे कागज पर लाना वो कठिन काम है और वो मुझे लग रहा है कि मैं आ, मैंने शुरू किया है आ, उसमें बहुत अनुभव आ रहा है कि एक कल्चर को भाषा को तो आप ट्रांसलेट कर सकते हैं पर एक कल्चर को उसके नॉलेज को नॉलेज को ले जाने वाले शब्दों को आप किस तरह से ट्रांसलेट करेंगे तो मेरे मैंने ये मेरी किताब अभी की है कविताओं की तो बहुत आदिवासी जब भी लिखने की शुरुआत करता है तो वो गीत से शुरू करता है वो लिखता नहीं पहले कागज की जरूरत नहीं है उसको तो गाने से शुरुआत करता है तो मेरे शुरुआती जितना भी मैंने मतलब वो लिखा नहीं कहा जाता जा सकता लोगों के लिए गाया गया है मेरे समुदाय के लोग जहाँ इकट्ठे होते हैं वहाँ गीत चलते हैं चार पांच गीत गा लो और लोग उसी गीत को फिर उनकी आने वाली पीढ़ी तक चलाएंगे तो ये गाने उनको मैं ट्रांसलेट नहीं कर पाया मेरे जो गीत थे वो मैंने ट्रांसलेट नहीं कर नहीं पाया मैंने सिर्फ वो जो कविताएं थी वो मैंने उसमें ट्रांसलेट की तो मुझे लगता है कि कुछ चीजें हैं वो हम नहीं ट्रांसलेट कर पा रहे हैं जैसे मेरी कहानियां ट्रांसलेट करना बहुत कठिन है वैसे हमारे गीत और हमारा कल्चर क्योंकि अनेक मान्यताओं से वो भरा हुआ है एक पेड़ को आप ट्रांसलेट कैसे करेंगे एक नदी को आप ट्रांसलेट कैसे करेंगे एक पहाड़ को कैसे ट्रांसलेट करेंगे क्योंकि वो तो उस उसके साथ तो हमारा रिलेशन सीख है हम उसके साथ जी रहे हैं तो उसको कागज पे लाना बहुत कठिन हो जाता है तो मुझे लगता है कि आदिवासी भाषा और आदिवासी साहित्य का सबसे बड़ा संघर्ष है कि वो उसको उसके जीवन को कैसे बाकी भाषाओं में रख पाएगा पता नहीं मुझे और रखेगा भी वो पूरा जीवन तो नहीं रख पाएगा इसी संघर्ष से हम गुजर रहे हैं। सो जितेंद्र सर दैट यू नो यू यू ऑल हैव एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन बट हिज हिज ओन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन इज ट्रांसलेटिंग ओरल लिटरेचर into uh, gujarati you know, from, from uh, bhile into gujarati and he started to with translating the agricultural songs uh, of his region from bhile into uh, uh, gujarati and he feels that he was not really able to do it very very meaningfully so then he started with the lakhra magazine where uh, poets from writing in different adivasi adivasi languages contributed and It, it was a struggle to translate those song the, the that poetry as well and to understand it so uh, translating from adivasi languages into gujarati or hindi has been uh, very difficult uh, what is also tried to do is uh, to translate oral uh, stories the the oral literature of his people into uh, gujarati and that he says is really difficult because first you have to record then you have to listen and transcribe and then listen again and then check your transcription and then look at the transcription and translate that into another language so it is a really long and uh, difficult process and even more difficult is uh, translating songs into uh, another language and you know he, he gives us the instance of the song of uh, dolaput and uh, he says that you know the the protagonist is playing the paudi which is which is a musical instrument and he's singing and he's singing uh ulwa ulwa ring ulwa ring ring doro and sabdo sabdo ring doro and you know he says even till till date he doesn't know what this this phrase ring doro means <laughs> and it's not just him even the people who sing the song do not know yes, yes. what that phrase means so it is a really difficult task 
to translate somebody's memory into another language. Um, and it's, uh, you know, so, so he asks, you know, how do you, uh, how, do you, how do you translate this memory? How do you put it on paper? And then, to, then to, on, to another piece of paper in another language. Now, how, how do you translate knowledge? How do you translate culture? And well, you know, when the Adivasis write, they begin with singing. So you know, he's he, he's talking about his book, and he's you know, he's just uh, uh, published this uh, book of poetry. And he says that uh, when he started writing first, it was songs, you know, because he says when Adivasis write, it's not really writing as such; it's it's an oral tradition. And he started with uh, with songs, and he feels that for this book, he was not able to translate his songs. Because it, it, it seems almost impossible to be able to do that. You know, he feels that there's some things that we cannot translate. We cannot translate our songs and culture. How do you translate? Uh, you know, when how, how do you translate a tree? Yeah, a river, a hill. No, we have a relationship with nature. We have a relationship with the tree, with the hill, with the river. And how do you translate that relationship? Uh, and you know, so th this is our struggle, especially for Adivasi literature. Uh, this is the struggle. Thank you so much for um, translating all of that. And um, I just realized, uh, Mina herself pointed out that she has so far been, um, you know, intervening only as a translator. We've invited her as a writer as well. So, yes. you know, before yes, yes. I open the floor for questions, yes. as we are running short of time, I would pass the mic to her. Yes, yes. Uh, no, no, I don't want to talk as a writer. I wanted to talk as a translator. Uh, but generally, my like everyone is hearing from the writers and their side of their point of view. Uh, so as a translator, what do I feel about all of these issues of loss and gain? Um, so there's a couple of things I would like to point out. So my, I started first as a translator. I was around 18 or 19. I translated the work of uh, VCK uh, President uh, Tol Tirmavalaman. So one of the early things, um, it's very similar to what Tirmal Mardin was saying, you know, about dialect and language. Is that I I went to a Kendri Vidyalaya and I learned Hindi and English at school. So Tamil was my mother tongue. And I was like, Tirma asked me to translate his work and I was like too shy to tell him my Tamil is um, is not really there. So I was using a dictionary a lot, you know. Of course, it's the only language I speak with my parents. So I used to look at this Kriya dictionary and there are so many words of everyday Dalit usage that is simply not there in the dictionary. And I remember actually, like every time I would come across a word that's not there in the dictionary, I actually write it down. And then at, at that point, I was looking at how lexico lexicography is this really middle class enterprise, yes. but also in a very upper class enterprise. Like how do words just slip out? Like how is it possible that somebody can address a meeting of millions of people, be absolutely intelligible to them, but this does not exist in your dictionary. This is not like, you know, some remote thing, like this is everyday mainstream. So what is the mainstream? I think this is a very interesting question um, that, you know, about. Uh, and the other thing that I also felt is, you know, a little bit taking on this issue of oral literature. I also think we have to redefine what, what constitutes literature. So there's this idea that, you know, only fiction, poetry, these are literature, but sometimes work that necessarily need not be, you know, creative in that aspect, like uh, I've translated the work of Periyar, translated the work of Firma. So I think these are also in some way, especially in a country like ours that's so fractured and so unequal, I think these works also are works of literature. Like they need to be read the way we approach literature, because if literature's job is to create rupture, then these works are also creating rupture, whether it's a street meeting, that, that there is, you know, that amount of, there is creativity. If you take to people an idea with which they are not happy, let's say the idea of dismantling caste, the idea of annihilating caste, and not everybody agrees on it. So how do you creatively sell this idea to them? Like, how do you, how do you push the boundaries of this rupture? How do you, how do you, like, let's say for a people who have been told to be passive, how do you tell them to be militant? And I think that, for me, is what, that's what a writer does. That's what you do as a writer. And that's what is happening in the stage. So for me, uh, when you talk about, you know, anti-caste writing, Dalit writing, I think it's very important to broaden the scope of what we consider literature, what we consider the world of letters. Because a letter, you know, it doesn't have to strictly be literary in that sense. 
Um, and the second thing I wanted to, you know, share as a translator was after a point, um, this, this actually relates to what everybody has been saying about loss of meaning, uh, whether it's Periyar or whether it's uh, the Tirukural, which is like this 2000 year old text, uh, or whether it's the poetry of Salma, the poetry of other women poets, there's always such repression. I don't understand why there's so much repression, but so much repression from those who translate into the English. So whenever the Tirukural has been translated, and this is like, it literally is called Inbat Tupal, like the book of pleasure. Yes. It's literally called Kamat Tupal, the book of sex. Yes. Right? But every time the word, you know, there's a word like sex coming in the text, so people are always translating it as union, <laughs> congress. <laughs> you know, that's because a lot of these translations took place in the 19th century. So either they are colonialists or they are missionaries. Um, you know, the first missionary who did this translation, Vira Mamuniva, the Tirukura, he didn't even translate the Kamat Pipal because he was a yes. Jesuit priest. A Jesuit priest cannot do that, you know. So I think that this, uh, this issue of, you know, the sexuality, there's a huge censorship. Um, and also, um, so that's something else I wanted to share. All of them are right in pointing out, you know, this, this wide gap. The other thing is, I think there's some, uh, I know that writers are slightly superstitious creatures. There's something called fate. So I remember Chiki, uh, um, no, Chiki Sarkar asking me to translate Perumal Murugan. And at the time I said to her, see, I translated Piruma, I translated Periyar, I'm translating Vallumar. I'm doing too many Tamil men. <laughs> so the next book is going to be a Tamil woman, you know, like I'm talking about, I'm talking about feminism all the time. So I can't like always do Tamil men. It was, really, it was a huge problem and it was staring at me like you just can't do men after men. Like now I'm here translating So, you know, you cannot run away from life, I, I think. So, yeah, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for that. And now, as we are running out of time, we do have five, ten minutes to open the floor to questions. So I'll start. <coughs> so my first question is to um, Nina again. So she was talking about the first translation, talisman. I remember it's talisman. So me coming from the same background, I, I had my studies in English, French and uh, Hindi. I didn't had a opportunity to study Tamil. So back uh, in my life, I self-taught it. So when I was uh, uh, in my age, when I was two and so I was reading about the through I used to come up with a lot of Tamil books. There was not even an English text. So I really appreciate that uh, this talisman was the first thing, I think, the translation of Truma works. And it's giving me, it's given you uh, in, uh, insight to me. So I really thank you for that. And again, I have to ask you a question is there. So uh, your novel, The Gypsy Goddess, so it was the incident happened in Tamil Nadu and your research would have been done in Tamil. But you would have the opportunity to write it in English, which has a bigger audience. So again, the novel came back to Tamil, was translated. So uh, how did you feel that? So uh, the research you made uh, in Tamil, it has been written in English. And again, the English has been translated into Tamil, which has a lot of uh, dialects. In Tamil dialect, which has to be it's a very serious issue involving caste and caste. So, uh, this the novel justified your writing, or it has to be improved, or uh, did you feel content with it? So, uh, on translating talisman, as I said to you, I have a. You know, when you're an 18 year old or a young teenager and somebody gives you responsibility, everybody looks at you as a frivolous person. So, I think Tiruma was the first person who felt. I could do something, you know, like, and for me, it was enormous responsibility. I couldn't say no at that point. I was like, somebody respects me enough to, you know, trust me with their writing. So I had to do my best. And I think it's a wonderful book. Um, so I don't think that, you know, I think that still Tamil is my mother tongue, my first language. I speak, you know, with my parents in Tamil. It's my language of most intimacy. So it's good for me. I speak to my children in Tamil as well. So uh, they now started picking it up. So it's a very close language for me. So I don't think it's alien, but, uh, and the fact that I was stronger in English helped me, helped me get through it, you know. But also the Tamil on the, on the Dravidian stages and it's very equal, easily accessible Tamil. Thiruma's Tamil is also not ornamental. It's very direct, very interesting Tamil. Uh, so I didn't face any challenge. But when I was writing the novel, for instance, Gypsy Goddess, um, it was quite interesting because, uh, 
caste has so many of these codifications, right? It's not only that you do not talk, but sometimes you cannot talk. And if you talk, you cannot look at their eye and talk. You do not look at the eye of your pannayar and speak, you know, like you're supposed to look down on the floor and speak. So there was all of this caste that was embedded um, as, you know, as quote. And how do you put this in dialogue? So one of the ways of writing that book was to try to see how do you get around this problem? Uh, how do you make sure that... So a lot of the speeches that take place in the book take place in democratic settings. It's the agricultural laborers of the village in a meeting. It's the communists in their meeting. It's the landlords in their meeting. And then everything else is reported speech. So that, you know, how else do you translate this? But for me, uh, I was lucky... I was really lucky in the sense that someone like Prem translated my work because he comes from a communist background. He comes from somebody who understands, uh, you know, the, Tamil, the the Delta farmers or their struggles in the Tamil uh, the region. And uh, for me, the biggest endorsement uh, for being translated into Tamil, uh, it's also very crazy because um, I have more books in German translation and French translation than in Tamil translation. So... <laughs> can't figure that out why it happens like that which, which I think is also because Tamil people are a lot of them are proficient in English uh, so if they were going to read me they might read me in English but uh, coming down to this question of uh, Prem's translation my father read this book when it came out and he said to me okay now I know what book you wrote so and my father is from uh, you know undivided Tanjavur from Pudukota himself he was also coming from a landless uh, agricultural laborers family uh, so for me this was like proof that the translation had worked like if my father could understand what I was doing then it was proof that there was something done there so yeah, yeah I'd, I'd also like to add to the fact that many women writers these days for the reasons she is citing you know, finding space within languages that are little distant, you know, not languages with, that are languages of intimacy. Many uh, female writers have talked about that. So there's another question then, and I'll pass the mic. Three questions. First question, here the writers are, do you have any literature in any Indian Adivasi language mein translate hua hai? Ye jaanna jaata. दूसरा क्वेश्चन है कि कोई ट्रांसलेटर जब किसी रचना को चुनता है तो उसके पैरामीटर्स क्या होते हैं वो अलग-अलग ट्रांसलेटर के हिसाब से अलग-अलग हो सकते हैं पर यहां जो लोग ट्रांसलेटर हैं उनसे जानना चाहता हूं कि वो कौन सी चीज उनको पहले अपील करती है कि इसका ट्रांसलेट किया जाना जरूरी है तीसरी बात कि वो कौन सी भाषा है भारत में और दुनिया में जो लार्जर रीडर्स की लैंग्वेज है इन भारत इन आउट ऑफ भारत थैंक यू सो आई क्विकली ट्रांसलेट ही हैज थ्री क्वेश्चंस द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फॉर ऑल द राइटर्स एंड ही वांट्स टू नो इफ देयर वर्क्स हैव बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इनटू एनी आदिवासी लैंग्वेज द सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज uh, for the translators, uh, how does a translator pick a test, text? What is it in the text that appeals and what are the parameters for uh, choosing texts? And the third question, I've forgotten the third question. Tisra Savala. Uh, what are the languages? Uh, larger, larger, larger yeah, the like, yeah, reach. Yeah, uh, in India, which is the language that has the largest reach and in the world. So anybody uh, who would like to uh, answer that. I can go for the translation. Sure. Uh, so I am interested in from South Indian. Please. Because maybe you have been. Yeah. 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 See, the first question is that um, I don't think any of her work has appeared in Adivasi language, uh, so it has to be redressed. Uh, and the parameters hai work ko choose karne mein? Hamara pehla, uh, mera pera, pehla parameter hai, personally, that politics and politics 
um, progressive hona chahiye the, the first parameter is that the politics should be progressive so it should be against caste it should be feminist it should be some way socialist uh, and this is how uh, so uh, i don't choose the book i choose the writer uh it it's it's not the best way to choose but it's a starting point and uh, i also um i also think that one of the ways in which uh, this begins is um the first time i read the book i start translating so it's very strange because everybody reads the book and likes it or not likes it so i find out how the book goes as i keep translating uh so <laughs> it's true i don't read the book so for me when i come to the last page i know how the story ends which is also interesting because for me it's a journey of discovery uh, and knowing and it's very good for the reader because if you are approaching the text without knowing anything you will make it very clear for the reader because if you have any doubts you get it in the beginning you know you don't know the story so mera translation practice bhi waisa hai and the third one um, in my opinion what are the languages in the in india i think hindi would have far greater reach than english uh, but i think english is a more democratic language because it allows for a link language but in terms of pure readership i don't know the numbers mujhe numbers nahi maloom hai mera perspective um uh, i think english is english is um, has more cultural capital because it's uh, gets more review space more uh, you know publication noise publicity festivals but in terms of pure readership i don't have the numbers to crunch i believe it could be other languages but also it's not easy to um, if there are more readers in malayalam and less readers in hindi then how do we compare if more people in kerala read books than people in let's say uttar pradesh then malayalam might be a more influential language so how do we choose mujhe nahi malum and then i'm going to ask someone no aap log keh rahe hain ki english mein sirf translation karne ke liye aur aap isko karne ke नहीं नहीं इंग्लिश का इंटरनेशनली लार्जर ऑडियंस होती है और दूसरा है कि इंग्लिश से लिंक लैंग्वेज बहुत सारे ट्रांसलेशन हो जाते हैं इंग्लिश के ट्रांसलेशन से की वजह से और दूसरे लैंग्वेज में वर्क ट्रांसलेट हो जाते हैं first of all thanks a lot for this fascinating discussion to all the writers and translators uh, so uh, i would like to ask a question because you have mentioned about this uh, the 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 loss of translation or the words which are missed out or the dialects uh the dialects which are missed in the uh in the translation so i was just thinking uh if there is some phrase or uh, or or instances which are translated into other languages uh if you think that is uh that that kind of struck you or that is that you think is like very positive uh for instance in uh, there is a translation of a malayalam uh, book and uh, it is trans- the the word is kada uh, actual word uh, kada in uh, english is story position i just stop so yeah uh, so there is a word which is translated from uh, malayalam which is uh, kada kada is a dialect uh, sort of it's not katha that's a usual malayalam word it is translated into english and it's a translation of story but the translator used the word story uh, t h o r y so it's it's kind of a like nuanced translation i was just thinking like from any of uh, like your work uh, all all the writers if you think some particular word or phrase or uh, or an instance which is translated into any other language which you think is uh, quite striking or any of the translators who did uh if you have any 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 words or or phrase or moment and secondly thanks a lot for all the translators for uh, yes. making it uh, accessible to all of us I, mean, i can understand all the all the languages they spoke but i cannot read yes. any of the languages so it's it's uh it's just a great uh work which all of you have done uh thanks to meena chandu and gopika for that uh, ल 
ஆக்சுவலி இங்கிலீஷ்ல டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணது இங்கிலீஷ்ல பிளே பிளே பண்ணது இங்கிலீஷ்ல பிளே பண்ணது உங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப இஷ்டமானது உங்களோட டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் எனி லாங்குவேஜ் எந்த லாங்குவேஜ் தெலுங்குல கூட దళిత్ పీపుల్ కంపారిజన్స్ మాట్లాడినప్పుడు అది ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ కొద్దిగా కష్టం అవుతుంది ఎందుకని అంటే ఆ ఒకటి నేను ఇందుట్లో మళ్ళీ మళ్ళీ డిస్కస్ చేసి దాన్ని చేంజ్ చేయించాను ఒక స్టోరీని ఒక మదరు కొడుకుకు చెప్పినప్పుడు నువ్వు చాలా జాగ్రత్త ఉండు వాళ్ళతో గట్టిగా మాట్లాడకు వాళ్ళు ఎక్కడంటే అక్కడ నిన్ను డిస్టర్బ్ చేస్తారు కొంత నువ్వు స్ట్రాంగ్ అయ్యేంత వరకు వాళ్ళకి ఎదురు మాట్లాడకు అని చెప్తారనమాట ఎందుకు నేను వాళ్ళకంటే ఎక్కువ చదువుతున్నా నాకు ఇంగ్లీష్ వచ్చు నేను స్కూల్కి వెళ్తున్నా నేను ఇంకా అందంగా ఉన్నా వాళ్ళకంటే నేను ఎందుకు మాట్లాడకూడదు అని అట్లా అన్నప్పుడు వాళ్ళు ఎంత ఎట్లాంటి మనుషులు అనేది తల్లి చెప్తారనమాట ఏమని అని అంటే తేలుకు గ్యాస్ట్రిజన్ ట్రాన్స్లేట్ తేలుకు తేలుకు తోకలో ఉంటుంది విషము పాముకు దాని పడగలో ఉంటుంది ఈ కాస్టిస్ట్ మైండ్ హోల్ బాడీలో ఉంటుంది అది ఎప్పుడు ఎట్లా టర్న్ అవుతుందో వాళ్ళకే తెలియదు ఎవరికి ఉన్నోళ్ళకి తెలియదు కాబట్టి నువ్వు వాళ్ళని చాలా జాగ్రత్తగా ఉండాలి ఇప్పుడు ఎమోషన్స్ తోనే నష్టపోవద్దు అని చెప్తుంది అన్నమాట అది చెప్పడానికి చాలా కష్టపడాల్సి వస్తుంది దాన్ని ఏం రాసానంటే స్కార్పియో అంటే ఇన్సెక్ట్ పాము అంటే స్నేక్ అట్లా లిటరల్ గా అట్లా వచ్చింది కానీ ఆ ఇన్సెక్ట్స్ ని ఆ పాయిజన్ క్రిములని ఈ కాస్ట్ మైండ్ తో పోల్చడము అనేది అక్కడ పవర్ఫుల్ ఉంది మదర్ కానీ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు చాలా ప్రాబ్లం now in her uh, first story the badaiya story there is a conversation between mother and son um, son asked why i shouldn't uh, you know have conversation resist uh, dominant caste children i'm better than them either in dressing or education or knowledge speaking english in terms of all these things i'm better than them then why shouldn't i uh, speak in mother tells and allow entire his body she when she put it in telugu it was very difficult for translators to bring it in such a acceptable uh, convenient uh, language that is what uh, she was telling ah uh, translators kuda kodiga then identify ayi no 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 we are not fine <laughs> because most of the translators who work who translated have worked so dominant in fact i have that question maybe i lost another one is ee uchakotalu ఊతకోతలలో మదర్ కొడుకును వాళ్ళు చంపేస్తారు కమ్మ దొరలు రెడ్డి దొరలు చంపేస్తారు వాళ్ళు ఆమె కొడుకు కోసం ఏడుస్తూ జీజస్ ప్రేర్ చేస్తారు ఏమని అంటే ప్రభువా వీళ్ళు ఈ మూర్ఖులు ఈ మూర్ఖులు ఏం చేస్తున్నారో వాళ్ళకే తెలియదు నువ్వు వాళ్ళని క్షమించాలి అని అడుగుతారు అన్నమాట అంటే కాస్టిస్ట్ మైండ్ ను అర్థం చేసుకోవడము ఆ క్రియాలిటీని ఆ చంపడాలని అర్థం చేసుకోవడంలో వాళ్ళు ఎట్లాంటి ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ మూర్ఖులు వాళ్ళు ఏం చేస్తున్నారో వాళ్ళకే తెలియదు రేపు వాళ్ళు జైలుకి వెళ్ళొచ్చు వాళ్ళు ఇంతనే వాయిలెన్స్ కావచ్చు ఊర్లో వాయిలెన్స్ కావచ్చు మొత్తం ఊర్లో ఒక పీస్ఫుల్ ఉన్న విలేజ్ లో వాయిలెన్స్ అవుతుంది అనే ఒక భవిష్యత్తుని వాళ్ళకి అర్థం చేసుకోలేకపోతున్నారు ఆ కాస్ట్ మైండ్ అని ఆమె ఎవరు చెప్పుకోలేక ప్రభువుకు చెప్తారు అనమాట ఇవన్నీ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ లోకి రావాలి అని అంటే కొద్దిగా అది ఆ మైండ్ ఎంత అకాడమిక్ అయినా ఎంత ప్రోగ్రెసివ్ అయినా ఎంత లెఫ్ట్ నచ్చ లైక్ మార్క్ ఎంత అయినా ఆ కాస్ట్ మైండ్ అనే వరకు ఈజీగా ఐడెంటిఫై అయిపోయి తొందరగా భుజాల భుజాలు దడుముకోవడం అంట తెలుగులో అది కొంత డెమోక్రటైజ్ కావాలి మైండ్ అనేది she tells in the context of massacres where you know dalit women lost her sons her sons were killed she prays to jesus christ like you know lord forgive these foolish people this is my question in fact that in english when we use the word foolish fools 
the essence goes when we use the word telugu word murkulu murkulu is fully loaded it provokes when they want to translate particularly these translators from dominant caste who associate with these polish people to bring that word to translate in the moment when they read that word murkulu they feel bit uneasy to translate uh, and this language also that mm-hmm. you know, I, i i have this question i'm struggling to write my own childhood into english terminology one good thing with english is we have many terms some terms are fully loaded some terms are you know bit easy then we struggle a lot then what happens when 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 it is written in local language i have this question to all writers where when it is translated in english you miss that essence you you miss that emotion in telugu all dominant caste people scolded me in childhood i am like dimapagura that dimapagru i don't know how to translate it in english we don't have dictionary which records the language which is spoken among marginalized caste people rimmategula dimapagura that language particularly in rayalseema from my region it is used to scold animals to scold buffalo to scold ox that language was used to me how i should keep it into english because i want that that that, that word is associated with my with my pain when i put it into english it's like self respect related pride huh? that fellow are how can you don't do this work even when i tell do you have dash fellow what should i feel in that dash in that blank so when your works are being translated most of but at least in the context of telugu the translators are from dominant caste do you have that experience even to me na you know hindi sorry you know tamil you know english you are from dalit background you are the translating dalit writer you might struggle when you read in vernacular language your own language you can understand you can sense the pain particularly when it is related to pain suffering emotion when you want to keep it into english maybe that same emotion may not uh, you know arise so do you see that kind of conflict as a translator writers also have you ever felt that something is missing in this why when they are within when they translated that that the pain the essence has missed something like that have you ever felt um, i'll answer very briefly and then uh, i'll let the writers answer so there's uh, three different things i want to touch upon uh the first question is uh, how does uh, fool or murka get translated so i had this poem on mohandas gandhi uh, in english and the last line of the poem says saddest fool you killed yourself many times before this too so when fool had to be translated saddest fool is like a term of abuse and this was a poem written in english so when they had to translate it to malayalam fool they can say muttal or something like that you know very colloquial word but it is gandhi so they cannot they, the translator did not want to offend him so she wrote something called buddhi shunyan <laughs> which means the one without intelligence so she was buddhi but that itself led to lot of provocation so there was a famous uh, writer uh, uh, who refused to come to release the book uh, she was a uh, old respected gandhian teacher she said i can't come and release the book and then um, the congress i think ramesh chanitala today he's the congress kerala congress president he said don't come into kerala and then bjp was for their own reason burning the book so uh, you know just this one word it was in english was fool but nobody was angry when it was in english but when went to malayalam and became buddhi shunyan everybody got angry like how can you call gandhi as buddhi shunyan but actually i was very angry buddhi shunyan is very polite word because fool means you have to say something like vital more than only that is fool no? so that's one of the things the second thing is you know the dominant caste language is also english also has um, starts reflecting dominant caste language and i felt this very painfully actually when i was translating the salma's work so there is a word called hazrat hazrat is a priest or um, a village elder but when i had to use this word priest i used to feel bad because priest in india when you use the word priest you immediately think of brahmins you mean 
immediately think of something hereditary. Yes. But in Islam, I don't think it was a hereditary position being a Hazrat and it was certainly not based on anybody's caste. So how do you make this differentiation between saying a word to mean Hazrat without saying that it is has any casteist connotation, doesn't remind you immediately of trigger word like Brahmin. For me, priest is a trigger word. So I didn't want priest. So I had to sit for some time and then I thought, okay, cleric is good. Cleric and village elder addresses the question translates the word Hazrat, but it doesn't bring this Brahmanical connotation. So even when it is Islam that's being translated, we have to be careful that it doesn't end up, you know, reflecting uh, the caste, uh, caste system and caste hierarchy. So this is one of the second answer. And the third question is, how do you translate anger? Uh, I think I recently translated Perumal Murugan's poem, uh, in which I think um, Tamil Nadu's finance minister uh, ended up calling H. Raja as a dog <laughs> or a rabbit dog. He said, I'm a minister, I can't answer a rabbit dog. It became a kind of cultural flashpoint, but Perman Morgan had this really beautiful poem, kind of justifying, and I really think maybe I should take a minute and read that poem, justifying this usage of the word dog against a so-called, you know, a Brahmin minister who is, you know, asking for trouble. So I'm just going to read this poem if I have the time. Do I have the time? Yes, yes. One minute, yeah? Yes, sir. So the poem goes like this. <coughs> you called us Panchamas, you called us Shudras, you called us the sons of harlots, you called us the children of concubines, you called us the lowly people. How many curses in your language? Your language is uncivilized, your language is pornographic, your language is filthy, your language must never be used. Today, seeing your ceaseless barking, my brother turned towards you and in a fit of anger, he called you a dog, a rabid dog. <laughs> your language is loathsome and yes, your language must never be deployed even against you. But we felt such joy, such rapture, such peace. The anger on my brother's face, was it not history raging? And I really felt that, you know, like when you use when you reclaim language to be used, you know, against oppressors, and there's a lot of oppressors here. Uh, so I really felt that, you know, that was conveyed in terms of all these questions about language and oppressive caste using, you know, how do you deploy? I think Namde Dasal does it very beautifully. And uh, my own translations, uh, again, I want to give an example from Tirma. So he says, uh, when talking about violence that takes place, he says, uh, and the way they prevent elections from taking place, it's a democracy is the violence of the streets. It conveys the way in which, you know, Dalit people are not allowed to, you know, represent themselves. And in Salma, there's a very beautiful instance. And every time I have a panel with her online or Zoom, I quote this. Because there's this woman who is very angry that her son-in-law has taken a second wife. So <laughs> she talks to her and she says, Allah, please punish this cunt son. And I like the juxt juxtaposition in which in one sentence she's praying to Allah, in another sentence she's using a very vulgar Tamil word. But that is language, isn't it? Like we can be very religious, very pious, and also be, you know, rowdy. So I'm going to finish here. I talked a lot. So, ma'am, you please. We can perhaps take just last question from him before we wrap it up in the room. Many translations in 
குறிப்பா என்னன்னா எனக்கு அம்பேத்கருடைய பவுண்டேஷன்ல இருந்து வந்த புத்தகங்களுடைய மொழிபெயர்ப்பினுடைய தரம் பெரிய கேள்விக்குரிய அந்த மொழிபெயர்ப்புகள் வந்து நான் மூல மொழியை வச்சு ஒப்பிட்டு பார்க்கறது இல்லை இங்கிலீஷோட வச்சு பார்க்கறது இல்லை அது வந்து படிக்கும்படியாகவும் இல்லை நெருக்கடியா இருக்கும் நிறைய இடங்கள்ல சிக்கலா இருக்கும் மூணாவது என்னன்னா மூணாவது விஷயம் என்னன்னா இந்திய அமைப்பு என்பதே பிராமணிக்கலா இருக்கும் பெருமளவுக்கு அந்த எழுத்துக்கள்லையும் இலக்கியங்களையும் அவர்களுடைய தாக்கங்கள் என்பது பதிப்புத்துறையிலும் எழுத்துலையுமே அவங்களுடைய தாக்கங்கள் வந்து மிக அதிகமா இருக்கு இப்ப குறிப்பா என்னன்னா பதிப்புல வந்து குறிப்பா நான் ஒரு ஆர்டிக்கல் படிச்சேன் ஆஹ் எப்படி சினிமாவை அவங்க டேக்கல் ஓவர் பண்ணிருக்காங்களோ அதே மாதிரி பதிப்புத்துறையும் ரொம்ப கிரியேட்டிவான ப்ரொக்ரெசிவான எழுத்துக்களை வர விடாம செய்யற வேலைகளை அவங்க செய்யறாங்க நன்றி Uh, I'm just going to translate the question. Uh, others will answer this. So the first is, um, this is really looks like a PhD thesis. So how many works have gone from Tamil into Malayalam, into Hindi and into other languages? So this is an important question for me. Um, and the second question is, um, skip on Rukun Chow. It's a lot of questions. He's asking about why does Tamil not get translated as much as it should. The second thing is that there's a writer called S.V. Rajdhuru. He has said that it's very important that, you know, translations come from the source. And when I read the works of, uh, for instance, when I read the works of Ambedkar, uh, especially justice to the original they are not as militant as the original and they are not true to the original so this is another question for me like what do we how do we address that and the third question is that the indian structure the structure of the indian state is a brahmanical structure and uh, just as uh, brahmins have captured cinema i also believe that this is me translating and this is not me not doing some anti brahmin shit like ungala vittuvanga enna twitter la troll pannuvanga so their influence in publishing and literature and writing and creating uh, creativity is a very high is phenomenal and i also have reason to believe that um, they uh, startle or uh, they prevent the publication of very progressive and uh, you know works that can try to dismantle the status quo so what's your opinion on that that's the end of the question அதாவது இப்போ பெரும்பான்முகன் சார் நானா தமிழ்ல இப்போ எழுதிக்கிட்டு இருக்கவங்களோட தான் நிறைய இப்போ பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க அங்கிருந்து நமக்கு வருது ஆனா பொதுவா வந்து ஆஹ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் இந்த மாக்யூஸோடதெல்லாம் போர்கையாடெல்லாம் தமிழ்ல கொண்டு வருவாங்க பாருங்க அப்ப நம்ம இங்கிலீஷ்லயே படிச்சிடலாம் அப்படிங்கிற அளவுக்கு வந்துட்டு அதை போட்டு சொதப்புவாங்க எஸ்சிஆர் சொல்லியிருக்கிறத வந்து பொதுவாக அந்த மூடத்துக்கு வந்து நேர்மை செய்யணுங்கிறது தான் நியாயம் செய்யணுங்கிறது தான் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன்ல முக்கியமான ஒரு வேலை ஆனா நான் வந்து இன் தன்னை மொழிபெயர்ப்பாளர் வந்து தன்னை இன்னும் கூட ஒரு கிரியேட்டிவிட்டியோட சம்மந்தப்பட்டவரா இன்னும் கூட தன்னை இன்டெலிஜென்டா யோசிச்சுக்கிட்டு சில பேர் மொழிபெயர்ப்பாங்க அந்த மாதிரியான சிக்கல்களை அதெல்லாம் மாக்யூஸ் இப்போ இங்கிலீஷ்ல படிக்க ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டேன் தமிழ்ல படிச்சா புரியல அது மாதிரி ஒரு பிரச்சனை எல்லாம் இருக்கு வந்து வேற இன்னும் ஒண்ணும் இல்லை இது பிராமணிக்கல் இங்க வந்து பல நூற்றாண்டுகளா பல ஆண்டுகளா தொடர்ற ஒரு விஷயம் திடீர்னு நீங்க வந்து எல்லாத்தையும் பிரிச்சு கொடுக்க மாட்டாங்க நம்ம கொஞ்சம் பறிச்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கோம் இந்த ரஞ்சித் மாதிரி ஆட்கள் வந்து கொஞ்சம் பறிச்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்காங்க சில ரைட்டர்ஸ் இப்போ பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க பட் ஒன்னு ரெண்டு பப்ளிஷிங் ஹவுசஸ் வந்து டார்கெட் பண்ணி கொஞ்சம் பேசுறது பிராமணி அப்படின்ற மாதிரி பேசுறத வந்து நான் அக்செப்ட் பண்ண மாட்டேன் எனக்கு காலச்சோடு என்னோட எல்லாருக்கையும் சாரோட ஒர்க் எல்லாம் பண்றாங்க பட் எனக்கு தொடர்ச்சியா கிடைக்கிற அட்டாக் என்னன்னா நான் வந்து ஒரு மைனாரிட்டி அவங்க வந்து என்னை யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறாங்க பிராமணிகள் அவங்களுடைய வந்து போரம் வந்து அது என்னோட நான் எழுதுற கெட்ட புத்தகங்கள் அதான் மைனாரிட்டியை நானே வந்து இது பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கேன் இல்லையா விமர்சனம் பண்ணல காட்டி கொடுக்குறேன் அப்போ அது ஆ மார்க்ஸ் எல்லாம் ஆ மார்க்ஸ் நான் நேரம் பேர சொல்றேன் எனக்கு என்ன பயம் இல்லை அந்த மாதிரி ஆட்கள் என்ன பண்ணுவாங்க வந்து நான் வந்து எதிரிகளோட கைகோர்த்து என்னோட சமூகத்தை காட்டி கொடுக்குறேன் இது காட்டு இலக்கியத்தை வந்து காட்டி கொடுக்குறோம் அப்படிங்கிற வேலையே கிடையாது நான் என்ன ரியலைஸ் பண்றேன் நான் என்ன ஃபீல் பண்றேன் என்னோட வாழ்க்கை எப்படி இருக்கு என்னோட சொசைட்டி எப்படி இருக்கு இதை வந்து நான் பேசணும்னு விரும்புறேன் அதுதான் இது வரைக்கும் பேசப்படாத விஷயங்கள் நம்ம பேச ஆரம்பிக்கிறோம் அதை பப்ளிஷ் பண்றதுக்கு யார் தயாரா இருக்காங்க அப்படிங்கறது தான் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் முதல் நாவல் வந்தப்ப எனக்கு வந்து பப்ளிஷ் பண்றதுக்கு யாரும் தயாரா இல்லை முதல் கவிதை தொகுப்பும் காலச்சுவடு தான் எனக்கு பண்ணாங்க 
அந்த முதல் நாவல் வந்தப்போ தான் பெரிய அந்த அப்போலாம் அச்சு கோர்க்கிறப்பவே பெரிய இஷ்யூ அந்த அந்த பிரிண்டர்ஸ்ட இருந்து த்ரெட்டன் பண்ணி யாரும் இப்போ ஏதோ பிரச்சனை வந்து அவங்க வந்து பண்ண மாட்டேன்ட்டாங்க இல்லை இந்த தானே பயமா இருக்கு இந்த நாவலை பப்ளிஷ் பண்றதுக்கு அப்படின்னு சொல்லி ஆனா அதை சால்வ் பண்ணி அதை அந்த நாவல் வந்து அன்னைக்கு கால சூடு பண்ணலன்னா வேற யாரும் பண்ணிருக்க மாட்டாங்க அப்போ ஒரு இலக்கியம் வெளியில வர்றதுங்கிறதுக்கு அவங்க யார் பப்ளிஷர் அப்படிங்கிறத விட அவங்க எதை தலித் இலக்கியங்களை கொண்டு வர தயாரா இருக்காங்க மைனார்ட்டிஸோட கொண்டு வர ரெடியா இருக்காங்க இதுதான் முக்கியம் நான் நினைக்கிறேன் இந்த ஒற்றை பார்வையில எல்லாரையும் கொண்டு வர முடியாது அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஓகே ஸோ வெரி பிரீஃப்லி த்ரீ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் இஸ் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் கெட்டிங் டிரான்ஸ்லேட்டட் இன் மலையாளம் both pirman mugan sir and i have a lot of our works in malayalam the second is that uh, yes some course, of course some translations uh, into the tamil have been uh, badly mauled so i have started reading marquez in english because some of the translators believe they are very intelligent and therefore they make marquez completely out of reach and they add their own layers to the text the third is that um, i agree that you know the system is likely brahmanical and that uh, not they are not willing to redistribute the resources so we have started to snatch away of what is rightful to us like ranjit is doing uh, now coming to this question i also believe that it's not right to target somebody for being brahmin or to target one or two publication houses i for instance have been singled out because i am published by kalachodu which is run by a brahmin but uh, and many people who criticize me say that uh, i am somebody because i belong to the minority community and i write slightly critical of my own religion people say that i have you know i'm hand in glove with the enemies and the oppressors but uh, i don't think that's the perspective to look at it i think that we should ignore who is the publisher and look at what is their outlook and what they're trying to contribute So can I have a small uh we have to unfortunately wind it up because this uh, place has to be used for <laughs> and with that i would like to thank all the writers and the translators with a big applause thank you so much